let's settle in so that um, we can begin to go forward. Let's settle in. Let's settle in. All right. So a whole lot, a whole lot is is unfolding in the kingdom. A whole lot is unfolding in the kingdom. A whole lot. A whole lot is unfolding in the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, it's 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 it's. So there's no there's no room for fear. All right. There's no room for fear. You know, like we said, we know that um, quite a number of things. All right. Quite a number of things are are trending. Quite a number of things are trending on the internet all right quite a number of things are trending opinions are you know um running wild on the internet opinions and like I, we usually say people are entitled to opinions yes all right as human beings <laughs> as human beings all right it's one of the gifts of being a human being all right entitlement to opinions all right but you see what would cause you to forge ahead isn't opinion. What will cause you to forge ahead is divine perspectives, all right? And divine perspective that informs your response, all right? Not just, it's not just enough to have a divine perspective, but you see, the divine perspective must, must push you to action. The divine perspective must push you, must spawn you to action, all right? That is why I'm always talking about what are you doing? What are you doing? Enough of sitting down to want to, you know, get the prophetic insight, you know, to what's going on. What are you doing? What are you doing? All right. What are you doing? I love the way Jesus put it in chapter five of the book of John. John chapter five from verse 18. He says, the son can do nothing. You see, the son can do nothing. But whatsoever he sees the father do, all right, or whatsoever he seeth the father do, he says, these doeth the son in like manner. So see, he sees to do. Jesus spoke about seeing to do. It is not just seeing to talk about. You know, it is not just hearing to talk about. All right. But seeing to do. Seeing to do. He said, whatsoever he seeth the father do, whatsoever he seeth the father do, this doeth the son in like manner. So it's important you are in a place of doing. And of course, if you are doing, all right, make sure you are doing the right thing. You know, <laughs> make sure you are doing the right thing. Make sure you are doing the right thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So this is a beautiful time. This is, this is a beautiful time. This is a beautiful time to catch up. All right. If, if you look at, if you look at how far you've come, if you look at, um, you know, how much you have, um, you know, um, 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 you know, touched, how much you've come to harness and come to terms with, how much functionality you have gained, all right, you will see that there is still room to go forward. There is still room to go forward. There is still room to go forward. So much room to go forward. So much to touch tangibly, tangibly. So much to touch tangibly. So much to touch tangibly. So, um, um, so these are, this is a time to not go into panic. Don't panic, don't at all, don't panic. Don't panic at all. No, don't give room to fear. Don't give room to fear. Don't give room to fear. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God forever. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. 
all right? Maybe, maybe there's, there are some of us who, you know, I want to believe is every one of us, not some of us, all right, who, you know, got busy between the last, um, between the last meeting <clears throat> and um, today, I want to believe everyone got busy. I want to believe everyone got busy. All right, got busy um, putting to work, experimenting, experimenting the things that we shared. You know, um, I got quite um, quite a number of responses after the last session. Quite quite a number of responses. You know, quite a number of responses. So I I, I trust that um, you know the much that we touched on last week was a blessing to you too. I trust that it was a blessing to you too. But much more than that, um, I want to believe that we got busy. We got busy practicing. All right. I want to believe that, you know, we got busy practicing. I got, for example, I got a number of persons, you know, sent me private messages, you know, text messages. Um, I got messages via WhatsApp Messenger. All right. And, um, you know, WhatsApp message, sorry, Facebook Messenger. Via Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp. Um, chat, um, Telegram chat, some SMS, you know, talking about, um, you know, a whole lot that happened to them, you know, as a result of, you know, the things that were shared, you know. But you see, much more, I, I want to believe that we got busy. We got busy putting things to work. We got busy putting things to work. We got busy putting things to work. All right. So maybe, maybe there's someone you want to ask a question. All right. Question from the place of practice. All right questions from the place of practice. You know, you, you put the things to work. You put the things to work and, um, you know, what was it like for you, all right? You like to, you know, ask questions, all right? Maybe you could go ahead and type it. Or if you want to speak with your mic, please just make sure that um, your, there are no noise in your background, in the back, no background noise rather, from where you are wanting to speak from, all right? So if there are questions, very quickly, in just in the next um, few minutes, please, so that we can go ahead. We can go ahead. We're already 30, 39 minutes into the meeting. All right. So any questions? Hello, are we here? Yes, sir, we are. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. You know, the whole, the whole place just went kind of like quiet. I was wondering, <laughs> wondering <laughs> if I was talking to myself. <laughs> so are there, are there questions from practice, all right? <clears throat> usually that's important. Yeah, we are here. That's usually important, all right, practice. Questions from practicing. Questions from practicing. Are there questions? Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Okay, yes. Is someone talking from there? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I, I I got um after the the last meeting. All right. I think that will be first my first time. To, to understand what it means to practice meditation with my heart. So I, I came to a place like I was having this sensation, like it's not what I could explain actually though, but I was having this um, funny feeling over me, but oftentimes what I see is that I notice I come to a point that I cannot press further. I, I just I just come to a point like even if I want to go beyond that, I just could not. So 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 in one of my um thoughts, I was not thinking I wish I could I could do something or or no more to you know, <coughs> press from that. So so that was my experience, and I needed to ask. Uh, how, how do I intensify that? All right. Um, very good question. <clears throat> and let me say this. Um, the question asked, all right, I hope we're all listening. 
the question asked is not strange. All right. The question asked is not strange. Let me even say this. All right. Maybe this may shock you. Now, maybe this may shock you. Let me say this. All right. Now, if you have never experienced what our dear brother mentioned now, all right, you have not really been meditating. I'm telling you. Or if you've been meditating, maybe you've never transcended beyond the first phase of meditation. Because remember during the, you know, um, um, the last session, I talked about the fact that most Christian, and this, I'm saying this authoritatively, all right, it is the number one reason why many believers don't break through into tangible kingdom operations beyond, beyond um, um, Pentecostal, charismatic, gifting, expression. You know, that's one of the reasons why when you look at the body of Christ today, most of what people, you know, almost most, most of what we use as a measure for spirituality, as a measure to want to attain onto, you know, is charismatic, ex, you know, gift expression. All right. And that is the model, that is the model, that is the model we have, we have built in our heart that we want to follow after. You know, you know, when you come to a place of <coughs> operations of the gift of the spirit, you know, word of knowledge, you know, at a quantum level, you know, operation of working of miracles at a quantum level. Now, most people in the church think that is the height of all that there is in the kingdom. Most people in the church think that is the height of, you know, how far one can go in the kingdom. All right? You see, but you see, the kingdom is broader than that. Okay? All right? The kingdom is broader than that. All right? The kingdom is broader than that. So usually I tell people, you know, by the time you begin to press into the kingdom, all right, using, all right, one of the instrumentality for navigating the kingdom, which is meditation. Meditation is just one, all right? Now, but by the time you begin to leverage on the art of meditation to want to break through and you haven't experienced this, then you haven't started. All right? Then you haven't started. So um, it's not strange at all. It is not strange. It is not strange at all. It is not strange in any way. Okay? It is not strange in any way. So that, that's that's something you should get, you get used to. It. It's something that you will you will uh, you will come to at a certain point. Now and usually, listen very carefully. Usually, that is one of the factor that doesn't make people to go beyond. You know, go beyond getting illumination when meditating. You know, I we spoke about that in the last session. All right, that most people, you know, in meditation, don't go beyond getting illumination, getting, you know, increased light, all right? As soon as they get increased light, you know, they think that is the height of it all, all right? And in fact, that is how many people have even built ministry. They built ministry on teaching. They built ministry on teaching from the place of, you know, new light, new revelation that comes to them in the place of meditation, all right? Without realizing that you can go beyond that. All right, and going beyond that is a major way of coming into, you know, actual functional kingdom engagement beyond just getting illumination. So that's that's not strange. All right, that is not strange. So I'm going to be answering that now, but quickly, just um, give me a few more. I think I'm, let me read out some of the questions I have on the screen.
All right. Okay, just just go ahead and write them. I'm maybe going to look at them later. But let me quickly answer. Let me quickly answer this question. Okay. Um, so very quickly, I, I want us to settle down and um, so we can answer this question. A lot of us would benefit from it. All right. Now. First of all, first of all, when meditating, all right, when meditating, when meditating, okay, now we explained that meditation is an activity that happens in the heart, all right, it is not an, act, it is not an activity that happens in the head, all right, we've dealt with that, all right, do not meditate with your head. Do not meditate with your head. Do not meditate with your head. Don't do it with your head. All right. Now, most people who experience frustration in the place of meditation are doing it with their head. All right. Most people who become frustrated, frustrated, frustrated in the place of meditation are doing it with their head. You know, and don't do that, all right? Meditation is not something you are to do with the head. Don't do that. Don't do that. And we explain that <coughs> one of the major reason why it is natural for a lot of people to want to carry out meditation with the head, all right, is because of um, majorly, <coughs> excuse me, majorly the system of education that, um, you know, most of the world operates. The system that, the system of, educa of education that most of the world operates, all right? What do I mean by that? Most of the world's system of education is built on mental intelligence, all right? Is built on the strength of the brain, all right? You see it in movies, even it's been pushed in movies, all right? It's been supported by movies, be supported by tests, written, you know, you know, um, documentaries. You know, you have to talk about the power of the brain. The power of the brain. Now, so you see, <clears throat> so naturally, people have that in view and as such want to attain, you know, want to attain, you know, um, 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 maximizing a greater part of their brains. So, hence why it is natural, hence why it is natural, hence why it is natural for people to, you know, want to engage in the activity of the spirit, you know, such as meditation, with the brain. Meditation is a spiritual act, all right? <clears throat> meditation is a spiritual act, and it's a spiritual act that you can only do with your heart. Particularly when, as a child of God, you want to meditate on the truth of the kingdom. You see, the kingdom to which you now belong is not a mental, you know, reality. All right? It is beyond, you know, the natural human cognitive, you know, function. It is beyond mental, you know, uh, um, uh, perception, all right? If you remember how you got saved, all right? Apostle Paul explains to us that it was with your heart, all right? And it is still with your heart that you continue to appropriate the kingdom because it was with your heart you believed, all right? And then, of course, with your mouth, you confessed. So don't think you could have believed with your heart, all right? And as a result, you came into the kingdom and don't think you could have done that. And now you want to begin to function in that kingdom that you gain access into by responding to the gospel with your heart. So don't think you will not function in that kingdom with your head. You see, if it was through responding from your heart, all right, via the instrumentality of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit that you believed and thereby came into the kingdom, don't think you will not function in the kingdom 
with your head. That's one of the reasons why I have often said, all right, after salvation, after people become saved, the very next revelation or the very next focus of truth, all right, believers need to be taught as soon as they are saved is the spiritual function of the heart. Someone is saying, where is that curriculum in the Bible? It's there. It's staring at you in scriptures. It is just that. The only difference is just that it is not taught in the same language that I've used. There is no such, you know, exact word for word, you know, this, you know, description of something called the spirituality of the heart. <coughs> but it is taught in scriptures. All right. It is taught in scriptures. It's in scriptures. In fact, the whole Bible, the whole Bible talks about it. The exact same words may not have been used, but the whole Bible talks about it. So it's important. It's important that you do not engage. <clears throat> it's important that you do not engage in any spiritual, you know, um, reality of the kingdom for that matter with the head. And I've said this. That that is a, in fact, that is the major reason. It is the number one reason why after becoming saved, all right, for me, most believers, engaging, exploring every other kingdom reality becomes difficult. It is the reason why many people, for example, for example, many people think you have to pray for hours. Now listen, you have to pray for hours and pray for months, then pay the price. I'm sure you've heard about that. <clears throat> that theology, where you have to pay the price for the anointing. Have you heard that? Can you please respond to me? Let's slaughter another cow. Amen. Sir, we have paid, though. We have paid. We have paid yes, price. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, <laughs> nothing is changing. And you are wondering what is going on. Is Christ not enough? Oh my. And you are wondering what kind of a God is this? After after he paid the price for Jesus, he now wants us to pay the price. We still pay the price again. What, what oh happened to the price we have paid before now? As we will pay the price, he did not give us the thing. We paid, we didn't collect it, we didn't collect what we paid for. This price we don't pay, don't pass with Jesus do. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. I, 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 feel like, I, feel like guessing, I feel like guessing where you are talking from. <laughs> all right, all right, just, just pay attention. Okay. All right, just pay attention. Now, you see, you see, that that's the fact. <clears throat> now, some people will hear this kind of you know comment and think, oh, that they are speaking with um, they are speaking with the son of spiritual things. <laughs> they are speaking of speaking with the son of spiritual things. You know they do not. Then truly they were not paying the price. Now listen, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. All right. Yes, yeah, someone says she's pained. Yes, and many, many are pained. You see, let me say this very carefully. There is nothing like paying the price. Listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. There is nothing like paying the price. I know many, many ministers of the gospel that many, many of us love have thoughts on this, you know, preached about it, talk about the importance of paying the price, you know, and they will tell you, they will tell you, Kitchen Kumar paid the price, you know, and she became instrumental in God's hand, you know, William Braham paid the price, and they became instrumental in God's hand, you know, um, um, Maria Woodward Elta paid the price. You know, and, and when you hear that, you will go and begin to pray. You know, you've got to pay the price. You will go and begin to pray. You will go and begin to, you know, you know, kabash, you know, like some people say, you know, and you stretch and you... Now, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. All right, please, this will help you. This will help you. Now, spending time in prayer, spending time in the Word, Spending time in meditation, spending time in fellowship generally, all right, is not paying the price. That is why we generally refer to it as 
fellowship. It is called fellowship. Why do we call it intimacy? Now, when you love someone, when you come to the realization that someone loves you unconditionally and you want to reciprocate, you want to respond to that love, do you consider the time spent in intimate, you know, um, um, fellowship with that person, do you consider it paying of price? No, sir. No, sir. You don't no. call it paying of price. It's not paying price. It's not, you see, a lot of people don't understand things, certain things. Enjoy it. You are, for God's sake, you are in a relationship. You are in a relationship. So what you may refer to as your obligation, your obligation to that relationship, all right, within the confines of fellowship, within the confines of intimacy, is not paying any price. You are just in love. Hence why, you know, you spend time enjoying that love. You're not paying price. You see, this kind of theology is one of what the enemy is using to rob many people in the body of Christ. That's why you look at those who push pain of price, who push that theology. All right, if you check their testimony, they will tell you how that it took them time to be functioning in what they are functioning in. And they are thinking that is the standard of Jesus. If you listen to their testimony very carefully, you can hear it even without, being, without it being said. You can hear it. That it took them time. It took them time. But look, for God's sake, look at the scriptures. Take your eyes of the ministers that you idolize, that teach these things, and look at the scriptures. Did you see how that, for example, you look at the book of Acts, did you see how that as soon as some people became saved and, and the Spirit of God, all right, they became filled with the Spirit of God. Did you see how that as soon as they became filled, along with the manifestation of tongues, all right, many began to prophesy. Many broke into gifts of the Spirit instantly without having to pay the price, my brothers and sisters. Look at the church in, in Corinth. Look at the church in Corinth. All right, with all of the challenges they had, with all of the canal related issues they had, so much so that Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 said to them that when I came to you, when I came, that's past tense, right? When I came to you, I could not feed you. I could not feed you with what? With meat, but with milk. He says, even now, 1 Corinthians 3, he says, for even now, you are yet not able to bear it. So obviously it was a baby church, it was a carnal church, all right? Yet Apostle Paul in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians had commended them for the fact that what, all of the gifts were complete in manifestation amongst them. All of the gifts in manifestation, all right, was complete. The only issue they had in relation to the gift of the Spirit, which Paul had to dealt with Paul had to deal with in 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14 was that of order. Order, all right, in relation to what operating or functioning the gift of the Spirit in the local church. They didn't have issues with operating in the gift. So what price did these guys pay? What price? They didn't even have debt because Paul said, <laughs> Paul said, I couldn't feed you with me. 1 Corinthians 3. I couldn't feed you with deeper things. He said, what I fed you with was milk. He says, even now you are yet not able. And yet, all of the gifts were operational. Look at the 12 disciples, the 12 disciples Paul met in Ephesus, in Acts 19. All right, in Acts 19. <laughs> After that, Paul asked them if they had received the Spirit since they believed, and you know, for that, they, they didn't even know whether the Holy Ghost had even come. Paul had to explain, and after explaining, he laid hands on them. They did not only speak in tongues, they broke out in tongues and interpretations. What price did they pay? Look at Cornelius' house. Are you, because you see, a lot of time we, we take, and that's usually what happens, when we take our gaze off the scriptures, all right, and focus our gaze on our experience 
our experience. All right? Our experience. So you now make your experience the model of Christianity, the model of spiritual work. You make it the pattern, all right, to be attained onto, the pattern to be built after in order to attain onto a, a certain spiritual operation. When you look at what Paul said, for example, in relation to gift of the Spirit, when you look at what Paul said, after talking about the gift of the Spirit in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, see how he ended the scripture, how he ended that chapter, all right? He said, earnestly covet the best gift, all right? Then in that way, they say, say, yeah, I will show you the best way. I will show you the best way. Earnestly desire. Earnestly desire. And that we have dealt, have dealt with that in previous teachings. I will attempt to talk about that, you know. But see, listen carefully. There is nothing like paying the price. After being saved, you are called to just be in love. You are called to fellowship. You are called to fellowship. And actually, listen carefully, actually, the number one ingredient that causes the breakout of divine realities in us and through us is accurate truth. Listen very carefully. It is when accurate truth is missing, that is when people struggle. They struggle, they push, they struggle, they push to want to have what is theirs in Christ. So because they didn't have accurate truth, and they push and push and push, and God in his mercies, you know, at a certain point of their pushing, introduces a certain level of light. At another level of their pushing, introduces another level of light, you know, they, without realizing what God is trying to do. So God introduces light here, in, and eventually they experience breakthrough. Breakthrough. Then they suddenly, after, after six years of their Christian work, six years after their Christian work of, of doing, going around this routine, suddenly for the first time, six years, all right, they begin to feel God's power. Tangibly, they begin to feel the tangible anointing, for example, in their palms. So they look back and now begin to teach, teach how far they have come as what? As the model to get what they now have. So they now preach and tell you, I paid the price. You need to pay the price. Do you see how such doctrines have entered into the body of Christ? Please, can I, can I, let me get your response. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 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 Now, this is how this yes, kind of doctrine has entered into the body. So the person looks back at, at the path that he took to get here. You see, to get to where he is, all right, then he now begins to teach it, all right, as a message. Begin to teach it as a standard to be followed to arrive at where he is. That is how those kind of doctrines came up. Look at the book of Acts. When you look at the book of Acts very closely, <clears throat> for example, look at Stephen. Stephen was just one of the saints. He was just one of the saints who, on the, on the foundation of accurate truth, on the foundation of accurate, because the Bible said that the apostles took on the responsibility of teaching daily, teaching daily in the synagogue and from house to house, teaching and also breaking bread. So the apostles took on the responsibility of bringing accurate truth, causing accurate, you know, uh, you know the apostle Paul tells ministers of the gospel, tells ministers of the gospel to rightly, to rightly divide the word of truth. And usually I say, if the word of truth can be rightly divided, then it means that what it can also be wrongly divided. It can also be wrongly divided. You see? So, the apostles, you know, took on the responsibility to accurately, correctly divide the word of truth. So, the, 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 by, by taking on that responsibility, they made the environment, all right, of accurate, you know, division of the word of truth available to everyone. And you see, in an environment of accurate division of truth, 
in an environment of accurate, you know, you know, um, 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 expounding or communication of truth, people will find it easy to pray. Do you understand? People will find it easy to pray. People will find it easy. I've often said that. Accurate truth will provoke praying amongst a host of other things. Accurate truth. It will provoke praying. It will make praying very easy. It will make fellowship very easy. Accurate truth. It will make praying very easy. It will make truth. It is where truth, you know, is not abounding as it should. You know, that, 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 that praying becomes difficult. You now have to be using a um, psychological, you know, psychological um, 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 methodism to make people pray. You are thinking it's spiritual. That's why yesterday, mm -hmm. like, pray. You know, I don't know if you grew up in those kind of churches. You know, they'll tell you, pray so that you do not pray. You know, you know, in Yoruba palace, you know, I grew up in a Yoruba church. You know, they'll tell you, badura, come on, bad, badura. You understand those kind of thing? So they will use terrible testimonies. Tell you of how, you know, you know those kind of things. Using, now, in the church today, in fact, I see it done in, in many young, upcoming you know, um, um, circles, you know, Christian circles, you know, where somebody tells you a story. Now, you may think it's spiritual. You may think it's spiritual. Somebody tells you a story. The end of it is actually to make you pray. No, 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 see, listen. Now, while stories or testimonies of people can serve as an um, encouragement, you see, can serve as encouragement, the only instrument that should be used to provoke praying or to stir people's hearts to intimacy is the truth of God's word. Is the truth of God's word. For ex let me get an example. No person will be taught accurately what righteousness is and we not want to pray. Did you get what I said? No person is no person will be accurately taught justification. Accurately, I don't mean is taught, you can teach justification and you can accurately teach justification. No person will be taught justification accurately and we not want to pray. <clears throat> no person will be accurately taught the revelation of his redemption in Christ and will not want to study or meditate. You see, the two with which God endears us to himself is his love. How did he endear you to himself in the first place? All right, while you were yet a sinner, hmm? while you were yet a sinner, you know what I mean by that? Before you came to that place of, you know, making a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. What instrument did God use to draw you to himself? It was his love. And that means that it is his love that he will continue after you have become saved now. It is his love that he will continue to use to endear you to himself. It is his love. Now, after becoming saved, all right, the revelation of his love will now continue to come to you through accurate teaching. It is his love. It is his love. When you study, study previous generations, all right, you read about, you read about, you know, certain group, different groups of people, all right, that history talks about. For example, there's a group of people the history calls the mystics, all right, the desert fathers and all of that. All right. Now, if you study about those people, what provoked them to go that far? In fact, if you read their stories very carefully, they were not seeking for power to begin with. Are you paying attention? They didn't go that far. Because they were seeking for power. They were, wanted to pay price. For me, some of them, it was because they saw how, how worldly the world had become. How, how decayed the world had become. So in a bid, in quotes, <laughs> in a bid, in quotes, to protect their salvation, they left in their mind at the time, they left what they considered the world. Why? They wanted to go to a place where it could just be them and their savior. <laughs> Where it could just be them and their savior. So, in other words, in the background, what propelled such action was intimacy. 
not paying price. It was intimacy. It was intimacy. <laughs> so I understand there's such teaching in the body of Christ. You know, you need to pay the price for the anointing. Pay the price for the anointing. Maybe let's not even go there. The anointing. Pay the price for the anointing. Pay the price. <laughs> you were promised the anointing. Do you understand that? Listen very carefully. Before you got saved, all right? Are you paying attention? Do, are you aware that before Jesus went to the cross, he spoke to the, to the disciples about the promise of the Father. Remember? <clears throat> we spoke a bit about that last week. We said the first expression of the promise of the Father is what? Is new birth. Is salvation. <clears throat> it is new birth. Now, it is in that promise of the Father, which is new birth, that the Holy Spirit, all right, that the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is, you know, is revealed. So the promise of the Father is actually salvation. It is salvation that brings the Holy Spirit. All right? Are you paying attention? It is the promise of that which is salvation. All right? That causes the Holy Spirit to show up on the same. Because the person who now administers that salvation after the work had been wrought, or after, in quotes, the price had been paid, the person who now administers that salvation package is who? Is the Holy Spirit. That is why Jesus in chapter 1 of Acts, listen carefully, what price did the apostles pay? In chapter 1 of Acts, shortly before he left, he told them, he said, tarry in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. So when a believer, when a believer becomes saved, all right, becoming saved is the believer experiencing the promise of the Father. Remember, we explained that. The promise of the Father is not just speaking in tongues. All right? The promise of the Father is what? Is salvation. The Jews, they understood it. They understood it. Because people like Jeremiah spoke about it. Sorry, first, people, I was going to say Joel, actually. People like Joel spoke about it. They shall come to pass, Joel 2.28. It shall come to pass afterwards. I will pour my spirit. All right? Jeremiah spoke about it. All right? Isaiah spoke about it. Ezekiel spoke about it. Jeremiah 31, he talked about it. All right? A new covenant in which what? I will write my laws in their heart. They saw it as the promise. So the first expression of that promise is what? It's new birth. And that is why we said, according to scripture, it is in new birth a person receives the Holy Spirit. It is in new birth a person receives the Holy Spirit. So, somebody now asks, so when a person is saved and he's not speaking in tongues, he said, let me pray for you. What does he receive? No, he doesn't receive anything. What happens to him when you lay hands on him, if that's how you're going to minister to him, is it is the spirit within that fills him. It is not another spirit. It's not the Holy Ghost coming from heaven. All right? He, do you understand that? He came. He has come. He does not come again from heaven. Hallelujah. Are you listening? <coughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why we don't tarry anymore. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why we don't tarry yes, anymore for the Holy Spirit. Glory he to came. God. He came. That was why Peter said to the 12 disciples in Ephesus, Acts 19, have you received the Spirit? He didn't say, has the Holy Ghost come upon you? He, has, he came once. He came once. <clears throat> so when you lay hands on people to help them, all right, give expression to the supernatural gifts of the Spirit, <clears throat> all right, what you are doing is that you are helping them to become filled with the same Spirit they have already received. Listen carefully. You are helping them to be filled. That is the reason why people, when they are properly taught, they can experience this 
for themselves. They can experience this in their home. They can experience this in their home. See, listen, if you look at scriptures, it is scripturally, it is, it is, it is scripturally Ill illogical. So think that God will give you the gift of salvation, the gift of his life. All right? And be waiting till another time to give you the Holy Ghost. You received everything at new birth. So what happens? Thank you. I love that. It says, out of thy belly shall flow. Do you see that? I was even going to come to that shortly. All right? John 7, 38. All right? What does he say? He says, as many as believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of your belly, as many as believe. Do you see that? Those out of whose belly the river shall flow are those who believe. Those who believe. Mm -hmm. Because the following verse says, that river, he spoke in reference to who? The Holy Ghost. So when a person already has believed and hands are laid upon him, what happens is that what? It is a spirit within that flows out. Do you understand? It is a spirit within that flows out. It is, it is nothing new coming upon him. It is the personality of the Holy Ghost that is already inside of him by which his spirit became regenerated. <coughs> mm. Don't forget Apostle Paul tells us in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. So it is by the spirit that the individual received that new birth. All right? That he becomes filled. Hence why that scripture, <coughs> excuse me, hence why that scripture in chapter, in chapter 7 of John 38 says, <coughs> As many as believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. What does verse 39 say? He said, this spake he, King James now, this spake he of who? Of the Holy Ghost, whom those that believe in him will receive. <coughs> those who believe in him. So, he says, to those that believe, all right, out of their belly we flow. To those that believe, out of their belly we flow. And don't forget, the verse after says, that which is to flow out is the Holy Spirit. All right? So, out of the belly of those that believe, we flow who? The Holy Spirit. So, the only we flow out of their belly. So, when you lay hands, it's not something coming upon them. It is what is within feeling them. That is what we expect. We have to look at that scripture very carefully. Acts 2. Acts 2 verse 4. He said, then there was a sudden what? Rushing mighty wind. What, does, what was the first thing it did? It filled. We explained that. We said that was immersion. All right? Can you remember? Please can I respond quickly. Can you remember, can you remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I remember, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, you see, it tells you that this rushing mighty wind filled the place. It didn't just feel it. It said it filled the room where they were. We said that feeling of the room is what? Is immersion. They were immersed. They were immersed. And we said that is what? That is applicable to what? So baptism into Christ, which is what? New birth. So the first thing the Holy Ghost did when he came was to recreate them, was to introduce them into Christ. You see, they were introduced into Christ because Christ, you know, stood, because Jesus stood before them for 40 days and was teaching them. Jesus did not immerse anybody into himself. He wasn't going to be able to do that without the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost. So even though for 40 days, he was teaching them things concerning the kingdom of God, he, he did not take it upon himself to recreate any person's spirit. 
That was going to be the responsibility of who? Of the Holy Ghost. So he was teaching and preaching for the days. He loved them. But you see, there was no bias, there was no sentiment. He wasn't going to specially, you know, or he wasn't going to give them a special introduction into himself. It was going to be the work of the Holy Ghost. And as a matter of fact, listen carefully, listen, please listen carefully. I know we are touching some, you know, very different theology, all right? But relax, we believe them too. So we're not trying to attack anyone. We, at one point, used to believe these things years ago, all right? Until the Lord dealt with me. Now, that's the reason why when Jesus told them, tarry, listen, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. You know, that scripture has been used to, 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 as a basis for, you know, what people call the baptism in the Holy Ghost, where you speak in tongues. So when you tell people that you cannot preach the gospel except you speak in tongues. No. Many people have even proven that wrong. All right? I'll give an example from history. For example, till date, many scholars, many historians have been amazed at the fact that a man called Alexander Dowie, all right, who, according to history, 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 all right, says history, all right, I'm saying history, says that he never spoke in tongues. That is, as a matter of fact, that is one of the reasons why, in, based on history, he had issues with the manifestations of the Spirit of God that attended, you know, Maria Wood Etta's ministry. History says he never spoke in tongues. And yet they were amazed at the alarming, you know, mind-blowing feelings that broke out in his meetings. That broke out in his meetings. Another good example is a popular minister of God that has been a blessing to, you know, many, many of us in the body of Christ. You know, um, a man called Kenneth E. Hagen, all right? I'm sure most of us, even all of us, know Kenneth E. Hagen, all right? All right, who has gone on to be with the Lord in 2003. Kenneth Hagen said, before he received the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, all right, he said he found out that he got many people, he said, rather, he said he got more people healed, all right, than even the people who called themselves the Pentecostals who spoke in tongues. He said he got more people healed than other fellow ministers that were in the same community who were pastoring churches who were speaking in tongues. He got more people healed than they, and he wasn't speaking in tongues. It took a while until he came to see the truth of that experience in scripture. He saw it for himself. Hence why he now took it upon himself to what? To want to experience that blessing. He said, but before then, he got more people healed than those who spoke in tongues. So how could he get people healed? You know those theology that you can't heal a person, you can't walk in the power of God until the Holy Ghost come upon your life. When it comes upon you, you shall receive power. <coughs> it is true. But what is your definition of that scripture? At what point does the believer receive power? That is a question on the table of most theologians. In fact, modern day theologians today. At what point? At what point? At what point? Are you paying attention? Thank you. So is that new bed? We dealt with this. Is that new bed? Okay. Um, somebody is saying, what about when he breathed on them and they received the I thought we explained this last week, all right? Somebody asked this question, all right, quoting from chapter 20 of John 22. All right. We dealt with last this. Last week. Yes. yes. We explained that. We explained what happened when he breathed on them. All right. Maybe, maybe I, I know I know this brother, I know you. So uh, maybe it was at that time of whatever, maybe tripped off or something. I, I remember that you've been following, you've been you've been online. I know this name, all right, and I know you, all right, I know you. All right. So, you know, so we, we dealt with that, all right. So you see, listen very carefully. So when Jesus said, Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. See, that endowment is not speaking in tongues. Yes, I used to believe that as at 90. 94, 95, 96. I used to believe that. All right? When it said, tarry. So we thought that the endowment with power is when the person becomes filled and begins to speak in tongues. No. The endowment with power, all right? The endowment with power is when a person's spirit is regenerated. But someone said, why does he say, 
until they endure with power from on high is because the person that was to impact that work, all right, was going to be coming from on high for the first time. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Jesus spoke about it now in John. Yes, he said, yes, when I go to the Father, I will send you. I will send you the Holy Ghost. When I get to the Father, I will send you the Holy Ghost. Jesus said so in John. You see, I will send you the Holy Ghost. All right? When I get to the Father. So, the, 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 the reason why it says it is from on high. All right? Is because the person that is going to carry out that work. All right? Was going to come. I know a lot of times, <laughs> see, listen, if we are to, see, if the church is to make that major transition into a greater level of the expression of the life of God, into a greater functionality of the kingdom, all right, accurate truth must be restored. This is one of the reasons why we are going, where we, why we are going in circles of revival. Have you noticed? We are going in circles of revival. Revival here, revival there. See, as long as we come to have revivals, we are not going forward. Revival look very good. It looks very good. We're having revival meetings. Did you now look at the script? Didn't you see what Paul said? Paul was in Ephesus in Acts. All right. Great miracles were off. Great miracles were wrought. Paul was having a wild time in Ephesus. Wild time. Power of God was breaking out everywhere. Healings everywhere. You know, <clears throat> years ago, years ago, that was, for me, the highlight of a successful meeting for me. I had that mindset. <clears throat> that, that was the highlight of a successful meeting. So those days, when I mean those, I'm talking about as far back as 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002. <clears throat> when I go to preach, in churches that will invite me then. Oh, man. If the church does not scatter, we've not had meeting. I mean, I used to pray for the meeting to scatter, scatter. I mean, I mean, people will fall under the power. Chairs will split. No, 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 no. Listen, no pushing. Uh, I learned well. I learned well. I never learned how to push. No pushing. I mean, no, no, no. God bears me witness. I'm on air right now. All right? People will get struck by God's power and they will pass out for five days. I'm not kidding you. Uh, the Holy Ghost in me is bearing witness. <laughs> People will pass out for seven days. I'm telling you, I was getting invites. Invite. I was a young boy. I was getting, I was hardly at home. You don't tell. We are not the day house. Amen. <laughs> I was hardly at home. <clears throat> I was getting invites. Getting invites. When I when I've spoken to some people, how many Western states have been to? People are shocked. When I tell people how far I've gone in Nigeria, people usually are shocked. And I tell them, no, this is not last year, it's not two years ago. I mean, as far back as 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2003. I mean, people will pass out. I mean, even the pastor that invited me. He will get so drunk and pass out. I mean, I don't mean pass out for 30 minutes and recover. Pass out for days. Pastors, I don't mean two, three pastors who invited me. And what happened? I used to, I used to provoke the supernatural to get, to achieve that end. I knew how to do that. Do you understand? <laughs> Someone say, look at <laughs> Of course, healings will break out. Hello. <laughs> my brother. Healings, me who experience miracles. <clears throat> miracles will happen. But for me, that was the highlight of a successful meeting. So those days, when I go to preach, I would just preach. I would preach. I did more preaching than I'm teaching. All right? I would teach a bit, teach a bit, then begin to preach. I could preach for one hour, 30 minutes. Oh, one hour, 30 minutes is the preaching. 
Then I reach into my spirit by the anointing of God. The anointing will begin to, we begin to, we, we start becoming pregnant. Before you know some, the power of God will begin to break up. Now listen, let me an example. Those days, maybe it was evening meetings, maybe those days of evening meetings, you know, maybe the church that invited me saying, okay, it's a four days, four days revival. Let me tell you something. Those days, the Lord bears me witness. I've been to churches, not five, not ten, where we we'll have meetings. The original plan was to have meeting for three days. So the three days meeting, four days meeting, and we'll end up stretching it for two weeks. I've gone to places where I ended up, we ended up having meetings for one month, one month. Listen, one month, every day power was falling. Every day we'll finish meeting, the church is scattered. I mean, the power of God will break, fall on people. All right. <laughs> I was in one meeting, the pulpit, the glass pulpit, nobody ran against it. Nobody touched it. All right. A bolt of lightning ran through me and struck the pulpit. The glass pulpit scattered. Do you understand? I have seen those things. Don't just leave me if I'm lying. Leave me with God. Amen. <laughs> So I was going to say this. So for example, <coughs> the evening meeting will start for 5, 5.30. All right, they will sing, you know, praise, worship. You know the, you know the routine now. Praise, worship, and all of that. <coughs> Maybe then they will hand over the mic to me for 6.30. I begin to preach 6.30. I will preach till like 7.30, <coughs> 8. The power of God will begin to break out even from before I finish preaching. And you see, I love those people outside Lagos, those Western states, those, you know, you know, Lagos. Lagos is one kind. Lagos. Lagos. They are too, so too, we know. too sophisticated we for know. the power of God. We know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we know. You, you live in Lagos. You are talking to me from Lagos. <laughs> I can't perceive the difference in your voice. <laughs> you know. Now, you see, the power of God will begin to break out from around 738. All right. Now, this is not me holding them to ransom. I mean, the power of God. And the meeting will stretch to 11, 12, 1. People will still be under the power. We will come the next day. They are still, they, they are still passed out. In fact, there were meetings we will have. As soon as somebody helps somebody that is under the power to touch them, he too comes under the power of God. As far as we're concerned then, I thought, oh boy, this is revival. Revival. But listen oh, carefully. Lord. Listen carefully. The Lord began to talk to me. <laughs> now, imagine how many years of doing this. Now the six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or I mean, yeah, now the six, yeah, 2000, 2001, 2003, 2002. I came back from 2002, I came back from from a, a long meeting, long meeting. This was eight years. Eight years of scat causing revival everywhere. I mean, I was getting reports from pastors telling that the revival continued weeks, months after I left. I mean, now, besides this, people came into, into strong oppression of the spirit. Pastors, for example, who had never felt God's healing power began to experience their palms born. Miracles began to happen. All right, several weeks, several months, and I kid you not, years after. In fact, there are pastors that I still know till date, who are in ministry, who trace their activation to the supernatural to those meetings. To those meetings, to those times I came to their places. But you see, after eight years of doing this, the Lord began to talk to me. Uh, uh, in chapter 20 of Acts, you know, after Ephesus has seen miracles. See miracles. What was Paul saying to them? He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance amongst the sanctified ones. Which is able. Now, the Lord now took me back to Paul. Remember Paul? Before he left, 
All right, after all the miracles, when he was going to speak to them for the last time before he left, before this very farewell message, when the Bible said they held a meeting in a, in a two story building, remember? The Bible said that Paul began to teach. All right, he be actually began teaching from evening. He taught till midnight because the meeting was long. Eutychus, remember the man Eutychus? You see why it's, why it's not good to sleep in meetings? Eutychus was sitting at the window of the second floor where the meeting was holding. All right, and the Bible says he sank into a deep sleep. You see, he fell twice. First, he sank into deep sleep before he now fell downwards. Learn from that. Amen. <laughs> so as you are hearing me now, don't sleep. <laughs> don't be lying down listening to me. <laughs> don't sink into any deep sleep here. All right. Now that's by the way. Now, it says, Eutychus sank into a deep sleep and fell and died. No, not a coma. He died. But the Bible said when they went to pick him, he was dead. What did Paul do? Paul went downstairs. Hugged him back to life. He, with a hug, hugged him back to life. And the Bible said that they went back upstairs. And Paul continued to teach till dawn. You see, when they went back upstairs, it did not become a celebration meeting. No, kept, Paul kept, kept the focus in view. He remained, he remained unmoved from the focus. And the Bible said that, and he taught Till dawn. He taught till dawn. Do you know how many hours of teaching that was? From evening till midnight. All right? Then that incident happened. Then from midnight till dawn. Now he's living again. He's not telling them, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. <laughs> Someone say, it's a Thanksgiving service. Our brother Eutychus just rose from the dead. <laughs> you understand? There was nothing like that. Nothing like that. He left them, all right, and after a while, wrote them a letter again. And he began to write letters. Communication of truth. He told them in the future. Remember the, the same, same people, people in chapter 3. He said, I have written it to you so that when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery, my knowledge rather, of the mystery of Christ. So that when you read, you may understand my knowledge, you may grasp my knowledge of the mystery of Christ. <laughs> so you see, the primary way people are going to be built up, all right, is by creating an environment, all right, where the truth of the kingdom is expounded. Because you see, listen carefully, listen carefully. Now, one of the things that, you know, you know, the presentation of accurate truth, expounding of accurate truth does, is that it gives you the opportunity of taking the responsibility of engaging the kingdom intelligently. A lot want to avoid that. Avoid that. A lot want to come for meetings where the Holy Ghost is just moving. You understand? Where the Holy Ghost is doing everything. You know, you know this kind of meeting where you are kind of exonerated from what taking responsibility. Where is the Holy Ghost? That is? Those kind of meetings are good, and there are times for that. There are times for that, and as a matter of fact, those kind of meetings are even more enjoyable in an environment of accurate truth. They are more enjoyable. Have you noticed? In an environment where there's no accurate truth and the power of God begins to break out, people don't know how to respond to the Holy Ghost. That's why, for example, you, are, you go to meetings and you are, you are trying to get a person feel the Holy Ghost and the power, you know, hits the person. Rather than the person to open, is that what the Bible says in Acts 4, 2 4? It says, and they spoke, they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Rather than the person to speak, the person begins to shout. <laughs> And you are saying, speak, speak, speak. Ah! And the person falls down, begins to roll. <coughs> now, is the person faking it? No. <coughs> is the person feeling something? Yes. But because there's no accurate truth, the person does not know how to do what? <coughs> how to intelligently, all right, respond to that power. 
how to intelligently respond to that power. So now the person is shouting just to speak in tongues, screaming. Why is he or she screaming? The person is actually feeling the tangible force of the spirit's power. But because the person has not been taught, the person does not know how to channel it. The person does not know how to respond to it. You see? Doesn't know how to respond to it. Doesn't know how to respond to it. The other examples I could go into, you know, of when people feel God's power, because they are, they've not been taught what to do. They think what to do is to be, you know, is to be screaming or is to be, no, there are certain times God's power come on you and you, 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 you understand it is too heavy. We understand those times. But there are other times where God's power tangibly comes or seizes your, your personhood, all right? And it is like that, in other words, for you to channel it, to give it expression intelligently. But how do you do that if you've not been taught? How do you do that if you've not been taught? If you've not been taught, how do you do that? You know, those days, I had to begin to ask the Holy Spirit because we saw all manner of manifestations, all right? We saw different manifestations. For example, there were certain times God's power would come upon people and people will lose their ability to speak in their language or in English language for days. They can't, for days, they can't act normal. They can't talk. They want to talk, it is tongues. In fact, there were some that we saw, they were dumb. They were made dumb. You know, not dumb, dumb. You understand by that? But the power of God sat upon them so heavily that what? Their tongues could not open. The only opening they could do, you know, was to show you their teeth. I mean, even for the number of them, they could not eat. And they were supernaturally sustained. They couldn't open their mouth to even brush their teeth. All right? For days. And their mouth... Never, the amount, ne never, never, no smell, no stench. It was not until I began to ask the Holy Spirit, okay, when this happened, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? When this happened, what are you trying to achieve? Relax, the Holy Spirit with gist you. He loves to gist. He loves to gist. Don't say, no, God works in mysterious way. Let us let him walk. We don't know what he's doing. He's the only one that knows what he's doing. Then why does he, why does he call us collaborators? No, how can you be a collaborator with somebody eh, who does things that he doesn't want you to know? No, he wants you to know. But because, you see, you, you're afraid. You, you're, you're making excuses for that fear. You're using ignorance as an excuse for that fear. You see, that's another thing. Because if you truly understand righteousness, if you truly are established and growing righteousness, you will know that righteousness gives you the, in quotes, F on three. You understand what I'm saying? All right? To talk to your father. To talk to your father. Lord, what are you doing here? You think he will get angry? You think he will tell you, shut up. <laughs> I am God. Let me do only, only what I, God, can do. You think he will say that? No. No, <laughs> he loves to carry us along. The Holy Ghost loves that. He loves to carry us along. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus forever. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone is saying, yes, that was me. And it got, it got annoying. <laughs> okay? I don't understand. Maybe that was you always shouting. <laughs> you know, yes. You know, you know, over the years, you know, when truth now comes, you can look at those moments and just smile and laugh at yourself. 
and laugh at your ignorance then. You know, you know, it's not enough to, to be annoyed. Don't get angry. <laughs> Don't get angry. You know, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory to Jesus. <clears throat> you know, so back to what I was saying. So when Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are indeed with power from on high. Now, the modern day church looks at that scripture and think, oh, that power is what? More, no, more, no, more. Come on, no, more. You know, when he starts praying in the Holy Ghost. No, that endowment with power is when life hits you. Eternal life enters your spirit and regeneration happens. That is power, my brother. Power is not until somebody falls down. Power is not until healing happens. Have you seen people who define power? No. No. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I feel like going in that direction a bit. Now listen, let me give you an example. Let me get an example, very carefully. Let me get an example. You know, there is an oppression that happens via the exercise of authority. And it is distinct from an oppression that happens via the oppression of power. Please, I, I don't want you to lose me now. Now listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Okay, okay. I'll come to that shortly, ma. All right, very good question. I'll come to that shortly. All right, and I'm seeing a question here, all right, which I, I would love to talk about because I, I believe that a number of persons to have experienced that one time or the other in their lives, all right, in their, in their work with the Lord. Now, I said something about authority and power. All right, authority and power. And, and it's important that as a believer, you are able to know the difference, all right? Particularly in your function in the spirit. You're able to know the difference, all right? You're able to know the difference. For example, not, I may not be able to go into that too much, all right, because I don't lose the thought of what we intend to look at today, but just listen, please, please, just listen, all right? I beg you, listen very carefully. For example, not everything that happens supernaturally, all right, is a product of power. Okay, okay. You know, the Greek word for power is what? It's dunamis, all right? We know that, Bible student, we know that, all right? And the Greek word for authority, all right? The most popular word used for authority is what? Is what? Exousia, all right? Exousia, all right? Now, it is not every spiritual operation that happens that is power. You know, a lot of times we call everything power because we are not seen in the spirit, all right? Because we are not seen in the spirit, Everything that happens is power. Now, for example, for example, listen very carefully. For example, now, there are certain events that happens in the spirit, all right, that is as a result of exercise of authority. Exercise of authority. All right? Exercise of authority. For example, are you aware are you aware that, you know, the most basic way, all right, the most <coughs> basic way, uh, how do I put it on? Okay, let me put it like this. The simplest way by which the believer all right, can, you know, exercise healing is via the basic exercise of authority, not power. Listen, listen, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. There is healing that happens via authority. Oh, please, I beg you, listen. I didn't plan this. This one, I didn't plan. All right? And I'm begging you to listen because I know when I begin to touch on things. Now, nobody asks the question that is directly allowing us to deal with this. All right? But I know I'm beginning to touch on things that the Lord wants us to hear. So please listen very carefully. All right? Now, um, most, most healings, 
all right, happens within the ambience of authority. Most healing. For example, when you are addressing an infirmity, when you are addressing a sickness, all right, a lot of times, what you need to do is to exercise your authority. Because you see, a lot of times, as soon as the devil causing the infirmity is sent out, that diseased part, body part will immediately begin to amend. But be, because a lot of times, or because most times, many believers, beyond just praying for the sick, have not trained their senses to see in the spirit. All right? Because as a result of that, they are not seeing anything. They call everything power. Now, remember in the, remember in the book of Matthew, Matthew 10, then Luke 9, and Luke 10, all right? When Jesus sent the disciples out to go and heal the sick, all right? Remember? Matthew 10, Luke 9, Luke 10, all right? In Luke 9, we are told he sent out the 12. In Luke 10, we are told he sent out the 70, all right? Some traditions say 77, right? This is 72, all right? Now, remember very carefully that at that time, Jesus had not died. He had not gone to the cross, all right? But what does the Bible say? Now, your translation says he gave them power. All right? It says he gave them power. But if you, if, if you look at it, if you study it very carefully, what happened there was that Jesus actually authorized them. Now, remember these guys, nobody had the Holy Ghost living inside of him or her at the time. Not even the disciples or the apostles. Not even the disciples or the apostles. All right? not even the disciples or the apostles at that time. <clears throat> so he couldn't give them the Holy Ghost. So what the scripture actually meant that Jesus did was that he authorized them. All right? He authorized them. And authorizing them doesn't mean that they went about healing the sick in the name of Jesus. No. In that day and time, there was no power in the name of Jesus. All right? There was no authority in the name of Jesus. All right? Power in the name of Jesus, authority in the name of Jesus happened after Jesus went to the cross, went to hell, became justified, conquered Satan, destroyed sin, atoned for sin, all right, and was raised and ascended. That is what the scripture describes in chapter 2 of Philippians. When he says that what? He became obedient to death, even to the death of the cross. All right, what does verse 11 says? He said, wherefore, all right, sorry, verse 9. He said, wherefore, God had highly, wherefore means on account of what he had done. God had highly exalted him and has given him a name. So when he got highly exalted and given him a name, it was not while he was on earth. <clears throat> All right? It was when he accomplished what was needed to be accomplished in hell. All right? In hell, then when he ascended. All right? What began in hell was completed in heaven. Do you understand that? <clears throat> Do you understand that? Redemption did not happen on the cross and end on the cross. <coughs> Do you understand? Yes, sir. So even though we see somebody like Paul talk about the power of the cross, it is not the cross as in the cross. All right, the word cross is used to, to sum up all that was accomplished. All right, that was why he told Mary after resurrecting. You know, we only talk about the resurrected Christ, the resurrected Christ, the resurrected Christ. All right, a more accurate way of describing him is what? Is who? The ascended Christ. Do you understand? Do you understand? I think it's a good thing to talk about this, right? Isn't this the time of Passover? I understand. Is this not the time of Easter? <laughs> Do you understand that? So you see, we talk about the resurrected Christ. The resurrected. In, now listen. Listen. Or we talk about the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. My brother. <laughs> resurrection is not a complete work. Resurrection was not complete, not until what he ascended. That was why after resurrection, he told Mary, I have not yet ascended. He said, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father and your father, my God and your God. <coughs> that is why you see Paul, Paul the apostle, in Romans 10 and in Ephesians 4. In Romans 10 and in Ephesians 4. All right? In Ephesians 4, he said, he that descended is he that also what? Ascended. 
He didn't say he that descended is he that resurrected. All right? Yes, I'm, my brother, I'm going to come to that. All right? So Paul didn't say he that descended is he that resurrected. No. He said he that descended is the same that ascended. All right? And he led captivity captive. You see? He ascended. His ascension is not just out of hell. His ascension is not just out of the grave. His ascension is not just out of death. His ascension also was what? Was to the Father. That's why in, he, in Ephesians 1, you see it too. He said he ascended and filled all things. Filled all things. Filled all things. Thank you. I love that. Thank you, sir. The ascended Christ. Not just the resurrected Christ. All right? Not just the crucified Christ. The ascended Christ. That gives you the picture of the total package of redemption. <clears throat> now, listen very carefully. So, you see, there was no power in the name of Jesus. Yes. But why does the Bible say that he gave them authority to go cast out devils, to go cleanse lepers? Why did, does the Bible say that? Now, I've explained that in the teaching. We have that teaching available somewhere, all right, that you can get. And that says, now, the basis for sending the disciples to go out and cast out devils, all right, and the basis for the demons yielding to the command of the disciples was on the reputation Jesus had aimed amongst the forces of darkness. Listen very carefully. All right? The reputation that Jesus had aimed. You see, as at the time Jesus walked on earth, Okay, listen. Somebody's asking, say, okay, so what does the scripture mean when it says the disciples were, he said, even the, he said, even the devil, the disciples said to him, even the devils were subject to us through thy name. Now listen very carefully. Thy name there, see, don't read it in English. Thy name there is not in the name of Jesus. No. Let me explain. All right, I'm already doing that. Now, the disciples were sent out to heal the sick, cast out devils, and you know, perform miracles on the basis of the repetition. Jesus had aimed, all right, as a man. Not on the basis of, you know, God, you know, exalting him. Because chapter 2 of Philippians talks about God highly exalting him. Chapter 1 of Hebrews said that what? On account of his atonement, all right? He said he had what? Received a more excellent name. You see, he received a more excellent name than the angels on account of what he accomplished. But before he accomplished that, he didn't have any excellent name. Are you paying attention, please? Let's look at these scriptures, all right? Maybe the Lord wants us to dwell here, all right? And if you have the energy, let's dwell on this a bit, then we'll move on. If you have the energy to stay to 12, glory to Jesus. <laughs> all right. All right, good. I love, you see, I love this question. Coming. Just keep the questions coming, all right, around what we are talking about. All right, <clears throat> I love that. It's important we understand this. And, in, 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 and it's, listen, this is not a diversion. These are important concepts, important understanding we need to have, all right, that our, our advance into further operation of the kingdom will leverage upon. So it's not a diversion. So listen carefully. All right, look at chapter two of that Philippians. Philippians 2. All right? Okay. Look at from verse 5. From verse 5, it says, Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. All right? But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant and was made, you see, Oh, dear. you know, there's something in this verse 7. Oh, Jesus. There's something there, but it is, it is way, way out of what we're talking about. You know, sir, you know when you feel revelation hitting you, you want to be tempted, all right? So don't get emotional, David. Don't get emotional. <laughs> but listen. Now, he says, he made himself of no reputation and took upon him, took upon him the form of a servant 
and was made in the likeness of men. All right. Look at verse 7. It says, and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. All right. So it says, on account of this, the next verse says, wherefore. Wherefore means what? On account of this. On account of this. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. Wherefore. So the exaltation came after he did this. Not during his time on earth. It was after he had humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He says, on account of that, God did what? Highly exalted him and gave him a name which is what? Above every name. So what is this name? What is this name that God gave to him? Because you need to be able to understand this. Now, someone that is asking, he said, what does the Bible, what does the Bible mean when the Bible said that the disciples came and said that even demons were subject to us in your name? What does that mean? Is it the name Jesus? Now, you must understand the use, you must understand the scripture's use of the word name. It doesn't necessarily mean name, name. You have five-letter word, J-E-S-U-S. -S, all right? Or if it is Yeshua. All right? Now, because here he says, wherefore God had highly exalted him and gave him a name. What name? He was bearing Jesus before he went to the cross. So, will it be anything new if after resurrection, ascension, God gives him what? The name, and the name is Jesus. What's, what's new about that? What's new about that? He was given the name Jesus from before he was born. Remember, the angel told Mary, and you shall call him what? Yeshua. Say, for what? For he shall save from what? Do you understand that? So what is the name God now gave to him here after ascension? <coughs> it is not, Jesus is not Yeshua. People are quarreling over, no, the right name is Yeshua, not Jesus. You know, it was the Illuminatis that introduced the letter J. They did. Have you seen those kind of videos? They, they introduced the letter J <laughs> to, 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 to malign, to compromise. So they're telling, no, no, don't, don't use, don't say, his real name is not Jesus, it's Yeshua. We've been using Jesus, we've been seeing the blind see. Glory to God. <laughs> Demons will know that Illuminati were the one that introduced Jesus. Did he say, oh boy, I know go out. That's not the real name. Call the real name before I go out. You know, the speaking of fight over out, over out. Nonsense. <laughs> now listen, you know, listen, Kevin. That mm. name, okay. scripture talks about here, is authority. I love somebody said reputation, all right? But it is summed up as authority. What God gave to him when he ascended is an authority. It's not a name, five-letter word. It is authority. Now, quickly, before we, we proceed, go to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1. Look at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. All right? I'll read from verse 1 very quickly. All right? <laughs> Someone said, can you imagine? Someone said conspiracy theory on the name. <laughs> all right? All right. That makes a lot of sense. All right? <clears throat> now, look at Hebrews 1. I'll read from verse 1 very quickly. It said, God who had sundry times and in diverse manners, <coughs> spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days, Spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, and upholding nothing by the word. Now listen to the next statement. When he had, he's giving you progression, when he had by himself purged our sins. Now, not it's not not what we are reading from this point now. When he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. You see, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name. Now, if you link the scripture to Philippians 2, when did he obtain a more excellent name? Was it not after what? Back to verse 3. Was it not when he had what? When he had first purged our sins, then to sit down. In fact, he's sitting down, all right, of the right hand of the majesty was the seal of his receiving a more excellent name. Do you understand, brethren? Do you understand that? 
All right, I need yes, your response. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you see, so but what happened? Back to what we we're saying. So what happened before he went to the cross? What happened? Now let me read to you, Mark. 10, sorry, Matthew ten. Quickly, going to do that very quickly. Look at it, Matthew two, Matthew ten, or Matthew chapter ten. Matthew chapter ten, verse one. He said, "And when he had, and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power. You see that? All right. He gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. All right." All right. Now, um, go to Luke chapter 9. Look at Luke chapter 9 very quickly. Luke 9, verse 1. It says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. All right. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. All right. Look at chapter 10 of Luke, Luke 10. Luke 10, now the next chapter. He said, said, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would go. All right? Therefore, he said unto them, now he began to give them instruction. All right? He began to give them instruction. All right? Now, the verse that brother mentioned is in verse 17. He said, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now, what does that mean? Listen very carefully. What does that mean? What does that mean? Now, there is something called the law, or is it a law? Don't worry about the grammar. All right. There is something about reputation in the spirit. All right. There is something about reputation in the spirit. And now everybody needs to understand this. Now, this is one of the reasons for practice. This is one, not the only reason. It's one of the reasons for practice. Let me explain to you. Now, you know, there are two grounds on which Satan knows you. Satan knows you on two grounds. All right, Satan knows you, every believer on two grounds. Number one, he knows you on the ground of the finished works. You know what I mean? Redemption. On the ground of whom you have become. On the ground of who you are now in Christ. He knows you on that ground. All right, he knows you on that ground. What you have become in Christ, Satan is not in doubt of it. He's not in doubt of it. Now, the second ground by, on which Satan knows you is on the ground of reputation and. What do I mean by that? You see, leveraging on the truth of who you are to begin to exercise, exercise yourself within the realities, all right, or rather within the context of that reality, ends your reputation. Do you understand that? It ends your reputation. It ends your reputation, not amongst people, no, among devils. That is exactly what Scripture meant when in chapter 19, March chapter 19 of Acts, when those demons, the demon, those demons in that man responded to the sons of Sceva and said, Paul we know, and Jesus we know, but who are you? You see, when those demons said, Paul we know, it was not, they were not talking about their knowledge of Paul, all right, in relation to his office as an apostle, but their knowledge of Paul in relation to that man's exercise of himself within the, within the light of righteousness. Within the light of righteousness. It's important you understand this. So it's not enough. <clears throat> All you need actually is the truth of who you are in Christ. But it is not enough. All right? That is not enough. I, by that, I mean, it's not enough in relation to what? In relation to, you know, facilitating you know, um, 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 stature, you understand what I mean, that growth, all right? You must exercise yourself within the context of the truth of who you are in Christ. That is, a, that is how you, that is how, you know, in a sense, that is how your authority gains, becomes double-edged. Double-edged. That is one of the reasons why we usually say that demons know who you are in Christ. They know who you are. They know. But they want to know whether you really know who you are. That is one of the reasons why sometimes 
All right, when you are just starting out to lay hands on the sick, you lay hands, it's as though the demon is not going. No, it's not because your faith is not strong. No, the demon, sometimes the demon wants to be sure that you know what you know. So the demon stays, he's watching you. The demon knows that you have authority over him, but you address it, he stays, he's looking at you. He wants to be sure whether you will change your mind about what you said. He wants to be sure sometimes whether you stand by what you have said. Now, the reason is because at that point in time of your Christian work, you haven't gained reputation yet. Is this making sense? See, I'm sharing it with you very simply. So yes, don't argue yes, and sir. contest and contend again and say, no, you know, no. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So, <laughs> there's such a thing as reputation in the spirit. So Jesus, by casting out devils, raising the dead, healing the sick, healing the oppressed, setting them free, had any reputation. <clears throat> so when the Bible says that, when the Bible says, for example, in that chapter 10, that he called his disciples and gave them authority or gave them power. Now, if you check that Greek, in fact, interestingly, the, in the Greek, <clears throat> that word power is actually exousia, authority. Thank you. Someone said there's a need to insist and keep insisting. So the Greek word power there is exousia, authority. But authority to do what now? Don't forget, Jesus himself had not been given that authority. All right? You know what I mean by that? After ascension. But authority to do what? He gave them authority to use his reputation. Listen. Listen carefully. He gave them authority to use his reputation. So, what was it like? The disciples didn't go anywhere saying, be healed in the name of Jesus. No demon will answer. Name of who? What do you mean? Name of who? There's no authority yet. The only authority Satan, before Jesus died, the only authority Satan bowed to is what we call the authority of the Lord. You see that in Zechariah chapter 3. Remember Zechariah 3? How many remember Zechariah 3? When Zechariah said he had a vision of Joshua the priest, not Joshua the son of Nun, Joshua the high priest, after the return of Israel from captivity, yeah. Joshua the priest was standing before the angel of the Lord, and the Satan was at his, at his right hand to oppose him. What did he say the angel did? He said the angel yes, sir. All right, spoke to Satan and said, the Lord rebuke you. All right? You see it also in the book of Jude chapter 1. All right? In Jude 1, when, you know, the Bible was talking to us, showing us about what the contention over Moses' body, all right, between Satan and who? And Michael. He said, Michael did not revert against Satan. Did not speak insultively, disrespectfully. Why? Michael knew that on account of a couple of things that had happened, all right, Satan, as far as the issues on earth is concerned, <laughs> the territory of the earth is concerned, Satan had a higher authority than even Michael at that time. Because don't forget, the authority between Satan was ruling on earth is the authority of what the dominion God gave to man. Hello? Hello? Does that ring a bell? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Yes. Remember yes, in chapter yes. 4 of Luke, in Luke chapter 4, when yes, Satan yes. showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, what did he say? He said, for it was delivered to me. It was delivered. All right? That was the same reason why, remember Job, Job chapter 1? Job 1, Job 2, remember? When the Bible said that God was having a meeting eh, with some righteous principalities of light, and Satan just walked in. And notice, God didn't say, eh? Who gave you the right to come here? No. Rather, what was the question of God? Where are you coming from? <coughs> God did not question his rights to be there. Why didn't God question his rights to be there? The guy had the right to be there. And the rights by which he could come there was what? The authority of man. Man was the person God gave dominion over the earth to. Do you understand? We've covered these things in previous teachings. <coughs> We've covered this in previous teachings. Can you imagine? God was having meetings with, with morning stars and Satan walked in. Satan, not as Lucifer, he walked in as Satan. And God did not question his rights. 
God didn't question his right. What does that tell you? That is an example of the kind, the nature of the kind of legislative meetings Adam should have been attending if he had not fallen. Did you hear what I said? <clears throat> because the guys that were in that meeting, they were not just angels. They were high-ranking spirits that had authority. They had authority over other spheres of creation. Not of this earth. Other spheres of creation. Do you understand that? So, but, so why does the Bible tell you in Jude? Let me read it to you. Why does the Bible tell you in Jude? All right, it's just one chapter. All right. Why does the Bible tell you in Jude? In verse 9. In verse 9. It says, yet Michael, the archangel, he's telling you he's ranking. He's an archangel. Look. Archangel. All right. The word arch, all right, is the Greek word archi. Where you have the word for what? For a principal. All right. A principal. Say, yet Michael the archangel. He didn't just say Michael the angel. He said, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. He said, that archangel dared not bring against him a railing accusation. What does a railing accusation mean? It means to, to speak to someone disrespectfully. What does that mean? It means that if my because this contention was on earth, the earth realm, right? So it means that if Michael had dared to speak to Satan, all right, within the environment, within the parameters of his authority, his own authority as an archangel, it would have been a disrespect. My, Satan would have knocked his head. Koi, eh? You, 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 you said it. You, you would have knocked his head. Because in the environment where they were, Satan was Lord. Yeah. <laughs> he was Lord. Oh. And Michael, being an intelligent, being understood principles, he knew that as long as this environment is concerned, this guy is Lord. So what did Michael do? Rather than what? Speaking to Satan on the ground of his authority, his ranking as an archangel, he reached out for what? The authority of the Lord. Same thing with what that angel did in Zacharias 3. What did he say he did? He said, but said, he said, does not bring against him a real accusation, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. He reached out for a higher authority. <coughs> I love that. Someone said, speaking to a certain outside normal protocol. All right? Do you understand that? Someone is asking, said, what would have happened? Take a wide guess. What would have happened? All right. What would have happened? What happens when a, 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 a police, um, a police um, 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 sergeant, all right, opens his mouth to speak to a police, um, you know, commissioner or superintendent? Take a white guess. All right? Don't worry. You can never be wrong. Just take a white guess. <laughs> All right? So you see, <clears throat> now back to what I was saying about authority. Now listen carefully. This is a picture of what happened. The disciples didn't go about saying, in the name of Jesus, come out. No. <clears throat> this is what they did. Now the Lord had to show me this. This is what they did. Listen carefully. They went to a leprous person Leprosy, go! All right? Then if the demon would speak or dare react to question their rights, they would say, Jesus, the Messiah. Don't forget, he wasn't dead yet. He had not paid for sin yet. Don't forget, Jesus had not conquered Satan yet. He had not conquered Satan yet. So they say, Jesus, the rabbi, all right? The rabbi called Yeshua, all right? Told us to send you away. Did you get that? Did you get that? I'm trying to make this as simple as possible, all right? Are you paying attention? That was what happened to 
Remember that other man they saw? Now I'm answering another question now that I've been asked earlier. Remember that man they saw? That the Bible said that when they saw, they said, eh, they said what? Stop, stop healing the sick, my friend. You're not following. You're not one of us now. Eh? Do you know? Do you know him? Peter said, no, I don't know him. You know, let's ask John. John is the one that is, you know. John, I've never seen him with the, with the master. He said, no, we don't. We, you, yeah. What's your name? He said, it doesn't even sound like one of the apostles. Stop that. We are his personal disciples. Stop that, my friend. They stopped him and had the even the right. Oh, that's the come and tell Jesus. Now, did you hear what they tell what they said to Jesus? Say, we saw a man healing the sick or casting out devils in your name. What does that mean? They saw the man acting on the reputation of Jesus Christ. Acting. The man was doing the same thing they did. And listen, listen. It is not something anybody could copy. Oh, that's another thing. Nobody could at that time go about and make it. No, 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 no. No. You must understand that what, there is a principle of what integrity. All right. And demons can tell it. Now, the people that Jesus did not personally tell to use his reputation couldn't do that. If they had tried to do that, devils would have recognized, they would have seen it because demons see things in the spirit can tell that there's no binding agreement between this person and this other person to use his reputation. So you can't fake it. You can't fake it. So it is as simple as that. It is as simple as that. They would speak to the blind. You blind spirit, come out of him. And if things taken that, they said, they would tell the demon, all right, Jesus or Yeshua, the rabbi, Yeshua the rabbi, they didn't say Jesus the Christ too. No. In fact, the person that they want to pray for and the people watching would have joined hands together and stoned them because nobody knew he was the Christ. Even they didn't know, not until the day Peter spoke by the Spirit. Even the Peter who spoke proud to that revelation didn't know him to be the Christ. They knew him to be Jesus the rabbi. He was their teacher. That was when Peter eventually spoke. You are the Christ the son of the living God. Peter said, flesh and blood has not made no, this known to you. It is my father. That means he came to you by revelation. Mary did not tell you. Mary knew he was the Christ. Don't forget, Mary was told that before Jesus was born, that he was the Christ of God. He was a savior. But Mary didn't tell anybody, including Peter, including John. That is why Jesus, Jesus knew that. That was why Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. So when Peter left all, when James, John, Andrew left all and followed Jesus, they were not following Jesus because they knew him to be the Christ. They were following him because what? He was a rabbi. And it was custom at the Lot of people at that time, there were a number of people who were rabbis, who had disciples. It was coming to have disciples. John too had disciples. There were many people who had disciples. Are you paying attention? Yes, I'm going to come to that. I was going to even come to that story. All right? Somebody's asking. Now, so, so do you understand that? So they didn't say in the name of Jesus Christ. No, they didn't know him to be the Christ yet. Even though they had even known, all right, let's presume that Matthew 16 had happened, right? When Peter had spoken of him as being the Christ and he has told the people. Let's presume that this was even after that. Don't forget he warned them to not discuss this with anybody. Don't let anybody know I'm the Christ. He told them. So they didn't go saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out. No. It was Jesus, the rabbi. And demons knew this particular Yeshua. They knew. You know, one of the, one of the, <laughs> one of the qualities of demons, or should we call it weaknesses of demons, all right, is that they gossip a lot. Do you understand? Demons gossip. That is why being a gossip is, is, is tantamount to being, <laughs> to being demonic. All right, when you're a gossip. No, don't be a gossip, right? You know what I mean by that? Demons gossip a lot. When one demon is cast out, is defeated here, all right, <coughs> All that demons will go and tell all that demons. See, that realm of Satan eh, is a very disorganized place, as against as against the, the 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 order of God. People think it's organized. The organization, the order people see in the realm of Satan, is actually a disorder. Demons know how to gossip. They know how to gossip. They know how to gossip each other's defeat. That is why as Christians, never be like that. You know what happened in Christianity? 
where a brother falls down, what happens? Is another fellow brother that will go and tell everybody. You see that thing we do in the body of Christ? That is what the Bible tells you. The Bible tells you that love will cover multitude of sin. We cover it. It's in the realm of Satan that one person's fall becomes what? The next what? The next headline news. So have you seen what uh, Apostle, Apostle Andrew uh, <laughs> no, no. That's in the, you know, no, that, that's by the way. So the point is this. Repetition, listen, repetition on account of exercise of authority, all right, spreads very far and fast in the realm of darkness. It spreads very fast. It goes very far and fast in the realm of darkness. Yes. So somebody asked just now, he said, is this also the case of whispering, I'm here, and the devil checks out, like A. Allen? Yes. Yes. Are you paying attention? In fact, I've dealt with that in previous teachings. All right? Where a demon will hear that, um, you know, they've called you to come and pray for somebody, and they now, tell, they now say it in the presence of the sick person. Say, ah, uh, Pastor so, so and so is coming. Now, I've actually experienced that too. Because if you listen to the teacher where I dealt with that, I give some instances, some personal examples. So, and as soon as the demon in the person hears it, the demon begins to check out so much so that the person begins to become well. So that by the time you get there, the person, either the person is half okay, the person is 50% okay, 80% well, in some cases, 100% okay. 100% okay. Are you paying attention? No. Listen carefully. That is not level. Somebody say, no, it's level. Oh God, I desire that. That's how many people desire mantles. That is not level. That is based on what? It is based on what? Building reputation. Do you understand? It is based on what? Taking the time to exercise yourself in your authority, in your identity, in your right position as a righteousness of God. So that's why you that have to... Price. Sorry? That is the price. Thank you very much. So obviously you are, you are listening. That is the price. You see, the price is... Oh, I love, I love this brother. <laughs> I know. Sky or deal. I know. You sky or deal. I know. My wife is telling me, I, I know. I don't want to tell the word your name. He's elder. <laughs> now, you see, let me leverage on that. I, I love what, what he just said. He just struck a chord inside of me. So, you see, the price is in acting in your righteousness. Do you understand? The price is in acting Acting out the truth of your identity. Do you understand that? Acting in the truth of your identity. That is the price. That's, that's praying, staying in fellowship, studying, meditating and praying for us. That's not the price. <clears throat> Those are what we call what fruits of intimacy, fruits of love. You are in, now, when, you look at what happens. I usually use illustration when I talk about this. When you truly love someone, don't you want to spend time with that person? Now, the time you spend with that person, do you call it price? Do you call it the price you are paying to grow your love with the person? No. That's just intimacy. So the true price, if you love the phrase praying price, is when you act. <coughs> you see what the word says, then you act. You see where the Bible says in Mark 16, those that believe in me, all right, those that are baptized and believe in me, in my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sea, they shall recover. What do you do? Don't go and pay price for that. Act on the word. Get out! Go to the shopping mall. Do you understand? Go to the bus, bus park. See someone sick and introduce yourself. Hello? <clears throat> All right? I can pray for you, and this pain will go. 
Nobody who's in pain that doesn't want to be relieved of the pain. All right, if you know how to reach their hearts. Some people, it's pity. You can use pity to reach their heart. See this? When you say, oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, once you do that, you've reached their heart. Say, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, how, how long have you, how long has this been? Have you, have you, have you, are you, I'm sure you, have you been seen by a doctor? Say, oh, yes. And once you strike that person opens up, yeah, I've actually been going to the, you know, you understand that? Human nature is easily drawn by sympathy. Once you strike that cord of sympathy in their nature, they open up. You let them talk. You just say, oh, that, you know, depending on the wisdom, how the wisdom plays out. That, oh, but do you know, do you mind I, I pray for you? Do you mind I, I just pray for you? And actually, you can be healed. By the time you say that, all of what the person has against prayer or whatever has fallen apart. Has fallen apart. What are you doing? You are acting on you act on the word. You see result. It doesn't matter if that first time the person is half healed. If, if. All right. I'm saying if. In other words, expect hundred percent result. Act on the word. That is that is paying the price. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen. 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 So you Amen. don't need to attain a level. You don't need to it's attain done. a stature to exercise your authority in Christ. All you need is correct, accurate knowledge. You don't need to attain. No, 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 no. No, no. Now let me quickly, you know, quickly answer that question. Somebody had asked. Um, I will need to scroll up. Uh, sorry. Somebody asked a question about. Um, So I've answered that question. Somebody asked, there's a name I'm seeing, Pilep. He said, okay, what does, what, uh, what does the disciple then mean when they came back to say, even the devils and are sub were subject to us through thy name? He said, does that name depict authority? Yes. Authority in relation to what? Reputation, reputation, reputation. All right? Reputation, all right? All right? Not authority in relation to that which Jesus received after his ascension. Okay, somebody had even said this. He said, um, okay, he said, he said, teach me on this. He said, teach me on this. He said, you know that, um, he said, you know I could not go to attend to a blind man because I felt I was inadequate. I did not prepare by praying about it. And they said, I've been on it for months now. You see, you don't need that. Don't prepare. Do, do you understand? Listen, everyone. The preparation you need, all right, to exercise your authority, all right, is all that Jesus already has done. Number two, a simple knowledge of your authority in Christ. Did you get that? The preparation you need to step out to exercise your authority in Christ is all, number one, all that Jesus has already done. All right? All that God has accomplished in Christ Jesus. Then number two, a simple, clear knowledge of your authority, your identity in Christ. That's all you need. You don't need preparation through praying. No. Stop allowing the devil to make you pray. When you pray, let the revelation of God's love and truth provoke praying, not the devil. All right? Now, there's a question I actually saw. I felt, I feel that answering it would bless us. Uh, I'm not seeing it now. Okay. 
I'm not seeing that one, but there's another one. There are actually two. There's this other one. Now, this one says, um, this one says, um, how do I respond? How do I respond to the intense feeling, feeling like electricity in my feet? I experience this even more intensely than ever. Yesterday, meditating and engaging the truths received from the business meeting, it was progressive until it stopped. Now, so how do I respond? Now, listen very carefully, all right? Amen. Please, are we all listening? Are we still here? Amen. Hello, are we still here? I want to be sure we are still here. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, how do you respond? Now, let me say something. Listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. All right. How do you respond? Now, let me say this very carefully. Number one, <coughs> becoming aware of tangible um, expressions of God's power or tangible weight, you know, of the, of the manifest presence of God, all right, is normal. For you as a believer, it is normal. Understand that. Now, of course, feeling it or not feeling it is not um, a basis for your righteousness. All right, if you say, but I don't feel it, mm -mm, don't worry. Don't worry. But you see, feeling it, understand this, is normal. All right? It is normal to feel. So number one, get used to it. All right? Get used to moments when, you know, um, you, you become bodily aware of intense, you know, um, 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 manifestation of God's power. Get used to it. Now, when it happens, listen, when it does happen, don't freak out. Stop freaking out. Stop freaking out. Do you understand that? When those weights hit you, don't begin to shout. A lot of like, when you shout, all right, you miss out on what God even wanted to teach you. Don't shout. You're not going to die. Do you understand? You will not die. Relax. You know, <coughs> relax. I remember one day I was in the car. I was driving, I was traveling, and there was this, you know, fellow with me. There was this, you know, one of our brother that was with me. He was traveling with me. Now, while I was driving, I began to fellowship with the Lord. As I began to fellowship with the Lord, you know, I started becoming increasingly aware of the tangible presence or weight of God's glory, all right, coming upon me and began to feel the car. Now, I didn't freak out. I was just, I wasn't even saying that I didn't even say it to this person. But this person began to, I looked at him and I noticed that at the point he was vibrating. Then after I started sweating and I turned on the air condition, he was sweating. He started vibrating. Then I looked at him. Then I removed my eyes. Now it continued. <coughs> now as it continued, he started praying in tongues and praying and, you know, praying started becoming screaming and yelling in tongues. Then after when I touched him, I said, relax. What's wrong? He said, he's feeling God's power. He's feeling, he's feeling. <coughs> and I said, relax. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. He says, you are shouting and you are disturbing my meditation. <laughs> Don't disturb me. <laughs> Don't disturb me. And he was shouting. Shouting. <coughs> and I said, what is it? He said, I'm feeling God's power. I said, relax, enjoy it. Just relax. He doesn't know what is going on. <laughs> All right. I said, just, just relax. Just relax. Be at peace. Be at peace. Relax. You don't know what it is. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. You can begin by doing that by praying in tongues in your spirit. Just pray in tongues in your under your breath, brother. Pray under your breath. Pray in tongues under your breath. Why, with your heart, you are probing this? What is this? All right. What is it? You will see it in the scriptures. You will see when, for example, in, 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 in it's all like Ezekiel. Ezekiel is having an experience. All right. He's having an experience, and he will say, "The Lord spoke to him. Do you know what these are?" You see the same thing with Zachariah. He's having a visionary experience. He doesn't know what it is. And a question will be asked. Listen, 
a lot of times in the midst of spiritual experiences, those questions are not necessarily asked directly. They actually ask directly, but it's not as if you hear them, but they come out of you as you asking the question. But you do not, a lot of people do not know that they are not the one wanting to ask. It is a lot staring the question in them, not so that they can answer the question, but so that what? They can take that step of faith in righteousness to do what? To ask the Lord. You see the same thing in, in Revelation. When one of the elders asked John, said, do you know what these are? Do you know what meaning this? And John said, I, I don't know. How can I know except you tell me? So listen, so in the New Testament, apply the same. <clears throat> you are feeling God's intense power. Don't begin to shout out in tongues. Should you pray in tongues? Yes, speak in tongues. Don't shout. Don't shout. Uh, relax. Yes, it's becoming intense. Relax. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray from the place of righteousness. Don't be afraid. God is not going to kill you. Say, it's too, it's too hot. Oh. It's too hot. Oh. I, uh, so if he, what is going to happen? God wants to fry your life. Relax. Relax. <coughs> it's intense. Relax. Relax. You know, so what do you do? <coughs> pray in the spirit under your, under your breath. Just pray. In a more common knock on the reaction, he brought on the demon. So you are doing that while in your heart you are probing this operation. You are probing this operation. See, listen, the more you start doing that, understanding will begin to filter, begin to come to you. Sometimes, if what you are feeling is actually a door to come into an experience, the moment you do this, the experience breaks open. But a lot of times, Many of God's children have lost, they've lost opportunity to come into important divine experience. Why? Because they've acted in fear. They've acted, you know, unintelligently. Unintelligently. So what do you do? Listen, let me answer that question. So when you begin to feel, you know, electricity of God's power, or sometimes it's like a hot sensation, all right? Relax. Number one, tell yourself, this is, the Lord's presence. This is the Lord's power. All right? And a lot of times, a lot of times, what you are feeling is actually as a result of your heart, your heart's resonance. Your heart is resonating to the tangibility of truth, to the tangibility of the person of the Lord. So that resonance manifests as what? Sensations. As sensations. Those supernatural sensations. So first, understand that. Number two, what do you do? Number two, what do you do? Enjoy it. Okay? Number two, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Number three, probe. If it continues, probe. How do you probe? That's what I explained earlier. Just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. All right? Focusing on it. All right? You can even, you can even communicate your probing in words. You can express your probing rather in words. As you pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. By praying, what are you doing? You are turning on your sensitivity. So once you've done that, you've prayed this thing sufficiently to turn on your sensitivity, you can, you can now ask the Lord, Lord, what's this? What are you doing? Oh, glory to God. Lord, what are you doing? I know this is you. I acknowledge that this is you. This is, this is your presence. This is your power. What are you doing? What are you trying to show me? What are you trying to show me? Let me say this to you. Sometimes, sometimes, all right, it is actually a manifestation of a spiritual oppression that is triggering inside of you. Triggering inside of you. Yes, that's something you must understand. You see, a lot of times, a lot of times, under that atmosphere, under that charged atmosphere, divine giftings can resonate. It is normal. It's a law. Even in natural science, it is, it is a law. All right? It's a law. Rest, you know the law of resonance all over that did physics? You take a metal. All right? You take a metal. All right? And, you know, hit that metal in front of another metal. All right? Of similar property. All right? It's same property with this. All right? So once you hit it, you hit it, what happens? 
The other metal without being touched will begin to make sounds, all right, in response to the sound this one is making. The law of physics calls it resonance. So what happens? How does that apply to this? During moments of intense awareness of the presence of the Lord, all right, the operations of the spirit of the Lord in your life can trigger. <clears throat> they can trigger. They can trigger. So when they trigger, you become aware of them. You become aware of them. But how are you going to know this? <coughs> Excuse me. How, do you gonna, how are you going to know this if you do not relax? Enjoy it. Then probe it. As a matter of fact, during those moments of probing, very major and important teachings can happen. Very major and important teachings can happen. Very major and important teachings can happen. Oh, yes. So I'm trying to read some... Uh, <clears throat> yes now okay first of all there's one somebody saying um now what we are explaining somebody saying he said yes this happens to me almost every time i pray it has been going on for years and in this period it has increased and spread and i haven't been able to maximize it now listen very carefully now let me quickly say this all right this is this is um, a wise counsel all right now, listen very carefully. Now, a lot of times, it's not always the case, but a lot of times, a lot of times, <coughs> when people become aware of, you know, this tangibleness of the spirit like this, a lot of times, a lot of times, what they are feeling, a lot of times, is um, expressions of supernatural gifts. Expressions of supernatural gifts. Okay? Expressions of supernatural gifts. Let me give an example, all right? Let me tell you a story. Now, there was this pastor, a minister of the gospel, he's a pastor, all right, pastoring um, a church um, outside Lagos. Now, in 2000 was when I was meeting for the first time. Now, I hadn't met him up until that day. He came for a meeting, a meeting that I was ministering in, in 2000, all right? That's 20 years ago, 2000. I was ministering. A, a sister had brought him to the meeting. A sister had brought this pastor to the meeting. No, so I was ministering, teaching, you know, then towards the end, you know, we began praying then um, by the Spirit of God, I started giving words, all right, giving word of knowledge and all of that. And without ever, ever meeting him before, I now spoke to him that I saw that God was activating gifts of the Spirit that he had never worked in before. Now, one of the major gifts that I spoke of was the healing anointed, the, the gift of healings, all right? <clears throat> now, listen, you don't need the gift of healings to minister to the sick, all right? All right? But notwithstanding, there is also a gift, an operation to be called the gift of healings. Okay? All right. Now, so, <clears throat> so I told him that, by the way, that God was activating the gift of healings in his life, you know, and that the tangibleness of that anointing will come on him now. So that was all. So we ministered and all of that. I didn't even lay hands on him because he was somewhere at the back. All right. And number one, we're were fast spent in time in the midst, so we couldn't go as and I couldn't go and lay hands on every person. I just pointed to him where he was, and that was all. Now, couple of months after, couple of months after, I ran into him. Now, of course, out of the meeting we talked, but we didn't he, didn't. he didn't have the time to explain to me what he felt or whatever. So, but a couple of months after, I ran into him. Now he came to Lagos. All right, again, he usually was coming to Lagos from time to time. So he came to Lagos to see me. Now, so while we we're talking, he told me he said for a while that after that meeting. That was when he was telling me for the first time. After that meeting, he said, I'm feeling hot sensation in his hands. It would come over him, come over his shoulders, and come to his hands. But he didn't know what it was. 
Because of course, he had never felt the healing anointing before. Never felt it, didn't know what it felt like, you know. And he didn't have the time to tell me whether or not he felt it after the meeting while I was giving him that word. So he said, after that meeting, he started feeling it. Or that he felt it when I said, give that word to him. But when he went back to his state, his church, he said, during moments of personal prayer, all right, when he's praying in the morning, that unction will come on him, you'll feel it. And you'll be wondering, what is this? Now he said, <laughs> because he didn't know what to do with it, he said, he will not begin to lay his hands on the floor. He'll put his hands on the cold floor. You know, early morning while he's praying, put his hands and see whether maybe this thing will reduce or something. Now it was when we got talking and I told him that what you were feeling was a healing anointing. We're like, oh, really? I said, this is what you do. All right, release it. The healing anointing is not for feeling. It is for ministry. Release it. Now, I sense I should say this for the sake of certain persons. So listen very carefully. I'm not saying this because I want to tell you a story. I said I should say this for the sake of certain persons. Listen, because this, I see that this applies to many people here. We are currently 92, all right? This applies to many people here. I'm seeing this in the spirit. So listen very carefully, all right? Now, I said, release it. So he was asking, say, how? He said, because the strange thing is, he feels it when he's praying in the house. But when he's preaching, he doesn't feel it, all right? Now, he had not started to feel it yet when he's preaching, okay? So he said, how is he going to release it? When he's not feeling it, when he's preaching. I said, good, this is what you do. Now, don't forget I told you, this was 2000. 20 years ago now. 20 years ago. Now, as far back as that time, God has taught me. Some of you have listened to some of the series we did on the principle of remembrance. God had taught me that then. So what I did was this. I told him, I said, this is what you do. While you are ministering, all right, there are two basic ways you can activate that anointing. Two basic ways. Number one, you can do that by intention, without a specific leading. After preaching, and you're not feeling anything, intentionally, all right, give an altar call to those who want to be healed, who have health issues, health challenges, and want to be, tell them to come forward. <coughs> tell them to come forward. All right? Now, I said this. When they come forward, when they come forward, just pray in the spirit. Now, I said, pray in the spirit. Now, this is not praying for the sick or right, taking an action of faith to pray for the sick. All right? You can do that too. All right? <clears throat> but I'm sharing this counsel with him in relation to staring, activating that anointing. I said, so when they come forward and you're about to pray for them, pray in the spirit under your breath. All right? Now, the what's the thing of praying is not to prepare yourself. Mm. You are, by praying in the spirit, as you are praying in the spirit, Remember, remember that word given to you about the release or activation of the gift of healing, or remember what you were feeling when that unction triggered in your time of prayer. Remember it. Are you aware that remembering is a spiritual exercise? Are you aware that remembering is a spiritual art? Hello? Do you know that remember, the art of remembrance is spiritual? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes. It is spiritual. I do. You see, it's kind of through our scriptures. We've taught this in previous meetings. You even see God telling Isaiah, He said, Bring me to remembrance. It is spiritual. Satan knows that's what Satan too leverages on it to put believers in bondage to the past. Are you, are you aware when somebody continues to remember, you know, a wrong committed against uh, her in the past? Where a person continues to remember, you know, a negative experience. I'm explaining that happened a lot. How do you think people suffer from, from, from trauma? All right? Trauma. That is as a result of what? One terrible experience in the past. All right? And anytime anything close to that experience is materialized around them, they, they begin to panic. Are you paying attention? So I told him, yes, as sir. you pray under your breath, remember. As you do that, that unction will trigger again. So I said, that's one way to do that. Another way to do that, another way to do that is before calling the people, while you are preaching, rounding up your message, don't forget I was counseling a pastor. While you are preaching, rounding up your message, all right, begin, set your mind, take your mind back to that feeling, that experience. Because you know you're about to release that power. 
take your mind back. Now, when I say take your mind back, it's not just your mind, mind in the head, all right? But I'm talking about what? The gate of what? Memory in your heart, all right? You know, activate the gate of memory by taking it back to that experience, either to that word or to that last experience while you are rounding up your message. As you do that, that unction will trigger and listen very carefully. All right, the Lord is witness to this. That was the beginning of this man's healing ministry. Till date, that was the beginning of this man's healing ministry. Up until the last time I heard from him, all right, up until the last time that I heard from him, <coughs> miracles, healings, creating miracles were, have been happening in his life and ministry. In his life and ministry. Hallelujah. I believe this, someone needs to hear this. Some people need to hear this. All right. I believe God wants a number of you to leave the place of just feeling it. To come to the place of intelligently releasing it. Yes, sir. Are you paying attention? <coughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Look at, look at. All right. Now, there's, there's a minister here. Now, there's, there's a minister here, you know, who is saying, Pastor, it worked. I'm sure you can see that. Everybody can read that. He said, Pastor, it worked. I just remembered, and the feelings came just now. All right? I'm reading it out already. Now, sir, you, he's, read, he's sending to me privately. I've read it out already. He said, Pastor, it worked. I just remembered, and the feelings came just now. It is as simple as that. Now, do you think this person is faking it? He can't be lying. It's as simple as that. Okay, someone is asking, someone else is saying, yes, sir, it worked. How do we release it? That's what I'm saying. Now, how do you release it now? Okay, you're saying, okay, maybe me, I'm not a pastor. So I don't have a congregation to experiment with. <laughs> you have the world to experiment with. Oh, yes. You have the world to experiment with. Now, let me give another counsel because of this question this person asked. <laughs> because of this thing about, um, so how do we release it? Now, another counsel, all right? Now, please, I want you to understand that what I'm sharing with you are things that the Lord taught me, things that the Lord shared, which has been proven. Now, which some of you are testing, all right? And you are seeing it work. Now, listen very carefully, all right? Now, another thing that, another counsel which you must practice is this. Sometimes, now don't forget, we are talking now in relation to what? The healing power of God, all right? Now, this also applies to, it also applies, <coughs> excuse me, it also applies to other people. Now, I'm going to explain shortly. Now, in relation to that tangible, tangibleness of the healing power of God, listen carefully. Now, also, when, for example, you are in a bus, in a bus park, in a shopping mall, all right, and for no reason, you're not thinking, you're not meditating, not praying. You start becoming aware, all right, of God's healing power. And as you become aware, there is no, there is no um, manifestation of, let's say, word of knowledge attending it. All right, relax. You are still not, you know, ineffective. Now, as soon as you start becoming aware of that healing power of God, it comes and goes. And you're in the baby, you're in the boss. All right? It comes and goes. It comes and goes. Now, one of the reasons usually is because there is someone that has a health issue. All right? Whose pain God sees. You know, sometimes people can be, now God had to show me this years ago. Sometimes people can be feeling pains. And they're, they're just thinking, they're not praying. Say, oh God, ah, this pain can't just stop. If this pain can just stop, hey, God, I've spent so much money. And in that moment, the Lord can locate somebody, a believer, of course, all right? Locate someone and trigger that unction. Now, God is not going to respond to that person by coming down, you know. God will respond by the presence of what you may call, let me use his, um, um, scientific languages, by the presence of transformers. You are a transformer then. So he will channel his response to that person through you, who is what? A transformer then.
transformer. So all you need to do is to just ask the Lord. Remember I said that earlier? Just ask the Lord, Lord what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? What, what do you want to do? Or just as simply as pray in the spirit under your breath. You see, you are praying in the spirit, but focusing on what? That which you are aware of. You're not just praying in, this, praying in tongues away. You are praying in the spirit, focusing on that which you are aware of. All right? You are aware of it. And you're just praying in the Holy Ghost. Don't act weird. Don't be spooky there. Don't, don't make people to become afraid of you inside the bus. <laughs> don't let people think you are suddenly losing your mind. Relax. Relax. Just very gently. Very be calm. <clears throat> be calm. You know, and just say, hey, Now, most time than not, you will get responses. You will get responses. All right? It will, sometimes it will come as a leading. All right? As a leading. Sometimes it will come as, you know, some kind of supernatural drawing. You, you find out that you are being drawn to a person. You are being drawn to a person. Now, usually, when you focus on that drawing to the person, all right, the revelation, you know, explodes. So that what you cannot begin to have what, a supernatural revelation about what the person is specifically going through. Specifically going through. Specifically going through. Do you understand? So specific leadings will come. One of it, maybe you're in a place, maybe in a bus. And the specific thing that came is just, just ask the people's permission, all right? And talk about God's love, all right? God's manifest love, all right, for healing. Just talk about it. Because sometimes it could even be, all right, more than one person that is there that needs healing. Do you understand? It could even be more than one person that is that 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 needs healing. There, it could be what if it's about five person in a bus. Hence, why a leading can come for you to talk. You may not have preached in a bus before. No, he's not telling you to preach. He wants you to just talk about his love, and let it round up on healing. Let it center on healing. So, if you share that and talk about healing, how that it's available in the atonement, all right. And you can now end up by saying, if you're here and you're sick in your body, all right, we can put this to the test. Jesus wants to heal you now. He's healed you, but he wants to manifest it now. You'll be amazed. At the number of persons, somebody could not be one person that will respond, while other people are skeptical. They want to see it work first. It doesn't matter. So you can imagine how many times you felt God's power in a public place, but because you didn't engage it, all right, an opportunity for you to have it released or see it expressed was lost. You just felt it. Eh? You are not a feeler. Do you understand? You are not a feeler. Stop feeling hot every time. Only you. Always feeling, feeling fire. Only you. Nothing is wrong with feeling fire. It is good when you feel it and you channel it. <coughs> Stop feeling fire. You're always feeling hot. You're always feeling hot. Always feeling hot. Release it. Release it. Glory to Jesus. Now, you see, I think it's important that we share this, all right? Because lots and lots of questions are coming in, in relation to this. You see, lots and lots of questions are coming in, in relation to this. Lots and lots. And I'm wondering, <laughs> in fact, some of the ones I was treating <laughs> from the beginning, <coughs> excuse me, I've gone up, so I need to scroll.
<laughs> Someone is saying, I love you. I love you too, sir. <coughs> I'm sorry, please. Um, I'm trying to look at the questions, all right? Okay, there's another one here. All right, sorry, I'm taking lots of flu. We've been having meetings back to back, back to back. All right, when in when an online meeting today, you know there'll be another one in the night. You know, back to back. So don't mind me. I'm taking lots of flu now. Um, okay, someone is asking. He said, um, "Okay, he said someone asked this." Okay, someone asks this. On the basis of authority and power, how do we explain how the woman with, with power that left Jesus without his knowledge of Paul's apron and handkerchiefs? Very good question. Now listen very carefully. Now, in relation to, you know, we popularly refer to it as the woman with the issue of blood. Remember when she touched Jesus and the Bible says, Jesus said, someone touched me. He said, for I felt virtue, right? Power. I felt substance. Leave me. Now listen very carefully. Now, what happened in that, um, is that not a Mark 5? What happened in that Mark 5 is tangible power. Do you understand? That wasn't authority, as it were. That is tangible power. Now, that's morally what I was explaining, all right? That tangible, substantial, palpable, feelable essence, all right? That is felt, all right? That is felt, all right? Is what left Jesus to the woman. Hence why Jesus felt it and the woman felt it. Because the Bible said that the woman felt in herself. She felt in herself. That is tangible power. Meaning that what? God's power too is tangible. You see? Now, we are discussing this now in relation to healing, all right? It is tangible. You see, that's one of the reasons why it doesn't matter whether or not you ministering feel anything. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter whether or not the person being ministered or feels anything, all right? But there are moments when what is being ministered, what is being released is felt. Now, I'm going to come, because I'm going to come to that, because notice I began talking about what ministering healing on the basis of, what, of authority, all right? On the basis of authority, all right? Now, I'm going to come to power. Wow, we're already three hours into the meeting already, all right? Now, but let's see how it goes. But listen carefully. In the case of the woman with the issue of blood, it was tangible power, feelable, palpable, all right? Power that flowed from Jesus to the woman. But isn't it interesting that every other person that were touching Jesus, I love the King James word, the King James word is thronging. You remember how Peter said to Jesus, he said, you see the multitude thronging thee. Throng means to be pulling at you. They are, they are not just touching you, master. They are pulling. Any wanting to tear your clothing off your body. That's what it means to throng. So they were touching, but there was no transfer. All right? Meaning that what? The woman's desire to be healed. That was the difference. Now, I know some people call it faith. It's desire. All right? Yes, of course, express as faith. Every other person were touching Jesus because, you know, you know there's where people want to touch celebrity. Oh, he's the one I touch. You know, people who say celebrity. Ah! You know, they want to show excitement of, you know. But this woman came with a purpose. She came with a desire. And Mark, I love the way Mark put it. Mark spelled out a desire. Because the Bible said that, say, for she said in herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. So her touch was intentional. It was purposeful. It was purposeful. So that action of faith, that action of intentional desire, all right, was the conductor, was what conducted the power from Jesus to her. Jesus felt the transfer 
and the human felt the transfer. So this was an authority. This was a transmission of tangible power with which Jesus was anointed. The same thing with Paul, the apron. All right? When Paul laid hands on the apron and the handkerchief that were taken to the sick, the oppressed, all right? Tangible power. Do you understand? Tangible power. Because see, when you talk about the supernatural in relation to healings and miracles, all right, there are actually different, different dimensions to it, all right? There are actually different dimensions. Listen carefully. There are actually different dimensions when it comes to, you know, the operations of healings and miracles. There are different dimensions. All right. One of the dimensions is what I began addressing earlier when I was talking about authority, all right? And that is not all the dimension there is to healing and miracles. All right? So, in one of the dimensions in relation to healing and miracles, all right, tangible power can be transmitted. You see? That is why, you know, we use the word release it. That is why when you release it by laying hands on someone, it flows. You see? It flows. So that the person be minister to is most likely to feel it. It flows. You must understand that. It flows. That is why you that feel it, you feel the thing, you know, flowing through you. You feel it. You feel it. It flows. It can be communicated. It can be transferred. It can be transferred. You see? And usually, in relation to this dimension of healing and miracles, all right, in relation to this dimension of healing and miracles, you do not even need to pray for the person to be healed. In relation to this dimension of healing and miracles, all you need to do is release it. Just put your hand on the person, put your hand on the, on the, on the sick part. All right? It will flow. The outflow of the power does not need your, in Jesus' name, Father, I rebuke you, it doesn't need that. It doesn't need that. All right? All the other person needs is the willingness to receive. You don't need to preach a sermon to the person and say, no, you need to believe. No, no. It's a willingness to receive. The person must just you know, be willing to want to be healed. They want a willingness to want to be free. You see, they want to be free. Okay, someone is asking, okay, how do we properly administer and distinguish between exercising authority or exercising power concerning a dark situation like sickness? And when do we know which is most applicable? Which is most applicable? Now, let's listen very carefully. Now, let me say this and listen very carefully. I was trying to say this earlier. All right, please, let me get your response. Are we still here? Are we still here? Hope nobody's sleeping off. I hope nobody, yeah, nobody's you, enduring this session. With you, sir. Ah, we are not enduring, sir. We are with you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. But yes, sir. I am enjoying. I am enjoying it. We are enjoying, enjoying it, sir. Enjoying it, sir. All right. All right. All right. We are enjoying, sir. Okay. We are not paying the price. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> Forget about paying the price. Hallelujah. Jesus paid the price. What you need to do is just to enjoy. Enjoy your intimacy. Enjoy your intimacy, your intimacy with the Lord. And enjoy the communication of truth. All right. Let truth come, let revelation come, then you apply it. You don't need to pay price. Apply it. Why do I need to fast for, for nine months to begin to flow in word of knowledge? No. That is why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, he said, brethren, now concerning spiritual, no, even though we know the King James says, now concerning spiritual gifts, he said, I do not want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, Quickly, in response to that other question. Now, 
Now, I was going to say this earlier. When it comes to authority, when it comes to authority, now, understand this. Most, let me say this. No, don't mind my use of words, but just listen, all right? I just want to use words simple enough to help us, you know, make sense of it. Most situations that will come against you in life, all right, only need the exercise of authority. Listen carefully, please get this. Most, I didn't say all. Most situations that will come against you in life only need the exercise of authority. All right? I will give you an example, scriptural example, first, to begin with. Remember when Jesus spoke to that tree, that fig tree, in Mark 11, right? Mark 11. I'm looking at my camera, woman. <laughs> all right? In Mark 11, all right, when Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Now, what you saw there wasn't necessarily a demonstration of power. It was just a simple exercise of authority. Jesus, Bible said, answered to the three and said, nobody eats of you anymore. Nobody eats of you anymore. And to not buttress on it, what did Jesus say in verse 22 into 23? In verse 23, in verse 22, in response to the marvel, because the disciples marveled, Peter marveled when he passed that place the next day. I said, master, say the tree you cursed is dried from the root. In verse 22, Jesus now said, he said, have faith in God. All right, the original render says, have the faith of God. Have the faith of God. All right, have the faith of God basically doesn't just mean have God's faith. Relax. I know it's been taught that it means have God's faith. Could anybody have God's faith under the law? Hello? This is another delicate, you know, no, sir. this is another delicate. No, sir. Do you understand? Nobody could have the faith of God. So what did Jesus mean when he says, now listen, listen, listen carefully. What did Jesus mean when he says, have the faith of God? He was speaking of the faith of God in relation to characterization, in relation to the how it works, not in relation to the tangibleness of God's faith. You see, the first time God's kind of faith Relax, relax. <laughs> if you, you were here last week, you remember what we talked about faith. Remember? In relation to people in the Old Testament, as it is spoken of in Hebrews 11. Remember? Hello, remember. Hebrews 11, teaching of faith. What was it about? Can somebody talk to me? What was it about? What is faith? The promise of the hope of redemption. Do you understand the promise of the hope of redemption? It was the revelation of that hope of redemption that informed their responses towards all of life's challenges. That is what Bible called faith as it applies to who? Old Testament people. <clears throat> See, what we are teaching is not to show that we have knowledge. No, it will help you. It will help you further, further, further embrace rest. Further embrace rest. Now, so when Jesus said, have the faith of God, all right, what was he saying? He was speaking of faith in relation to characterization, the character of God's faith. <clears throat> you know, the Bible tells us, for example, in chapter... Five of Ephesians, Ephesians 5, all right? It tells us to what? It says we should be imitators of God as their children, all right? So in relation to the faith Jesus spoke of in Mark 11, 22, he's talking about the character of God's faith. What does he mean by, what do we mean by character? In relation to how Jesus demonstrated it. Did you see how Jesus demonstrated it? All he said to the trees, nobody eats of you anymore. No asu, no shouting. He just spoke. Nobody eats of you anymore. So when he now, when the disciples, when the disciples drew his attention to it, <coughs> and in response to their wonder, 
He now said, have the faith of God. It is in relation to what? Characterization. The character of God's faith. How does God act? He speaks. He speaks from a place of effortlessness, from a place of rest and peace. Now, going to the next verse, verse 23. You now hear Jesus saying, Verily I say to you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed from here, cast to yonder, all right, and does not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that whatsoever he speak, speaketh or saith shall come to pass. He says, he shall have whatsoever he saith. What did Jesus show us again? He went ahead in the next verse to show us the characterization of the faith of God. How it works. All right? All right? How it works, but in verse 23 now, in relation to the exercise of authority. In the natural, for example, have you seen how authority works in the natural? Have you seen how authority works in the natural? Let's use um, the law enforcement agent, the police. All right? Look at the police. All right? What happens? You see a policeman, all right, stops your vehicle. It doesn't matter the size of the policeman. All right? He could be a four two inch tall in height. It could be five, six inch. It could be six, you know, feet inch. It doesn't matter. It's not about his size. All right? That man, in spite of his size, confronts your car. And you probably, you are, you are, there are six hefty guys, six hefty of you inside the car. It doesn't matter whether or not he has a gun, a pistol in his, in his, in his, in a revolver in his pocket. He just comes to you and tells you, stop, stop the car. Can I see your license? And he's looking at six hefty of you. He's not bothered. Why? What is informing his right to do that is that he is authorized by the federal government. Do you understand? His uniform or his ID is proof of his authorization. At that moment, what is he leveraging on? What is he leveraging on? Authority, not power. What we would ordinarily consider power is his gun, his weapons. But what he's leveraging on currently is what? Authority. So it tells you, come out, come down, come out, come out. Come now, open your boot. I want to see your boot. All right? And he asks you questions. You have every right to answer him. Not because you are seeing a pistol beside him. But because you know he's under authority. He's under authority. <clears throat> now, in a similar way in the spirit, forces of darkness are under obligation to obey us. You see, because the authority we have over them, we did not earn it. Do you understand that? We did not work it, work for it. That authority, the seal of that authority is Jesus' triumph over Satan, over sickness and death. Number two, the seal of that authority is Jesus' atonement for sin. Number three, the seal of that authority is, just, is Jesus' justification in hell. Number four, the seal of that authority is Jesus' eventual ascension, all right, with which he has filled all things. With which what? He has filled all things. So the signature of Jesus' triumph is over all things, over all things in the heavens, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. That is why you can tell an angel, come here. An angel, do you understand that? You can tell an angel, come here. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, most of the challenges life we throw at you are based on authority. 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 All right? 
authority. And I said, most sicknesses, all right, most sicknesses can simply be dealt with on the ground of authority. All right, because of the nature of the sickness. For example, <clears throat> listen, for example, one of the many reasons why most people are sick is because certain parts of their body has been compromised by the devil. Listen carefully. Listen very carefully. Has been compromised by Satan. By that I mean, you know, there are some sickness that are as a result of physical injury. All right? Physical injury. Or, you know, a physical injury that is internal, caused by, you know, some kind of lifestyle. For example, when a person, for example, begins to abuse the use of sugar. Are you listening, everyone? Are you listening? Wherever you are listening to me from listening, whether you are listening from the US, all right, in Nigeria, Coca-Cola is universal, right? Coca-Cola yes, is universal. So if you are here, <laughs> you are always drinking Coca-Cola. Okay. You are only shaking this thing. You shake it. You use it to eat bread. You use it to, 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 to rinse your mouth before going to bed. You use it to eat rice. My brother, my sister, man of God, woman of God, repent. 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 You are guilty, Abi. Elder, <laughs> repent. <laughs> repent. Stop it. Stop it. Some years ago, I'll tell you this story. Some years ago, there was this young man that was brought. All right. He was brought for me to pray for him. All right. His body had been wrecked, all right, badly wrecked. He was suffering from diabetes, all right? Now, after ministering to him, of course, by the power of God, he was healed. But I had a leading to give him a counsel. He came so strong. <clears throat> but we didn't have the time to talk after ministering to him, all right? Much later, I think a couple of weeks when he came to give his testimony, all right, <clears throat> I now told him that the Lord actually told me. Now, he didn't tell me what kind of lifestyle he was having, his eating habits. He didn't tell me. And I said to him, I said, the Lord told me to tell you, stop drinking Pepsi. His loved one, I was when he began to say, pastor, tell him. That's when they opened up and said, he, he sleeps with Pepsi. I don't know if you understand. He bathes in Pepsi. <laughs> that he, do, he cannot <laughs> eat a meal without a bottle of Pepsi. Wow. Do you understand that? No, that is another example of physical injury, but that is caused by... You see, because when you take sugar like that, when you take... Let's not go into health. I'm not a health uh, expert. But you see... <laughs> some, I think I'm having to say it because sometimes some of the health challenge people suffer. They cost it themselves. Of course, relax. No, God is not judging you. All right? In fact, that sin of causing it, Jesus already died for it. <laughs> Hence why it says he was wounded for your transgressions. The, your bad eating habits, he died for it. But you see, receive sense. Stop stopping. Stop it. All right, by the way, that's by the way. Now, that's an example. That's another example of physical injury caused internally. You know, because when you take those things, you are, in, you are taking into your body things that will work, that will cause certain things in your body the normal function, the normal operation of certain things to be compromised. All right? Now, hold on. Hold on on that thought. I'm coming back to that. So, I said, there are examples of, you know, sicknesses caused by, caused by physical injury. All right? I'm going to talk about that shortly. But, on the other hand, there are some kind of health issues that the person is living well. All right? The person is living well. But for some reason, the person, certain part of the person's body becomes exposed and a demon attacks that part. But a lot of times, because people don't see in the spirit, they do not know that the pains they are feeling is a demon that is holding that place. A demon is squeezing on that part. Like some times ago, I was praying, you know, praying in the healing line, praying, and I just came to this man, and by the spirit, without, without asking what was wrong with him, without asking what was wrong, all right, 
I just saw one silly, stupid demon sitting on the man's shoulder and wrapped his arm around the man's head, tightened his grip around the man's head. Now, without asking a question, I didn't even talk to the man. I just looked at the demon in the spirit. But people saw my face turned towards the man's shoulder. And I said, in the name of Jesus, get off. Get off his shoulder. Get off. The demon fell off. That was how the man got healed. Now, are you paying attention? So, in, so there are some kind of illnesses that are of that category, all right? Compromised or undermined, you know, body parts because a devil, a demon, is holding that body part to ransom. Not because of any physical injury, <laughs> you understand? At all, whatsoever. Now, in such cases, all you need is the, your excesses of authority. It is not power that causes the devil to go. No, it's authority. You tell it to get out. It just goes out. And as the demon gets out, what happened? That part of the person's body just amends, just gets well. Just gets well. Just gets well. All right. Now I'm explaining this as simply, but but when it's a case of an illness or a sickness that is caused by physical injury, of course, understand this demons too are also involved. That's what happens. <coughs> demons love to inhabit places of weakness. You understand? The moment, for example, the moment, for example, a part of the body becomes injured, all right, demons will leverage on it. So in that case, you'll be needing the oppression or you'll be needing the, you know, oppr yes, oppression of both authority and power. You see, authority to command that devil, all right, leveraging on that weakness, holding it to ransom, to get out and power to cause a supernatural remedy, a supernatural, you know, miracle to happen to that damaged body part. Let me be sure you understand what I'm saying. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 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 I understand, sir. You understand, sir? Yes, sir. sir, please, can you come again? I will. Oh, but that's all, uncle. I will. So, but uh, uh, are, we, are we listening, all right? Amen? We have about 91 persons online. I'm expecting your response. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is what I'm saying making sense? Do you know what I'm Yes, sir. We are listening, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Making sense, sir. Mommy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Somebody else is saying explain it. I will. I will. All right. All right. Let me explain again. Listen very carefully. Now, I said in relation to a health related issue that is caused by physical injury, all right? Maybe, maybe, let's say for example, maybe somebody had an accident, somebody had an accident, all right? And um, had his leg amputated, all right? Now, because of the accident, of course, a demon attaches itself to that place, okay? Now, in such given situation, you are gonna be exercising both authority and power. Authority to break the power of Satan, all right? Holding that place around some, the power to cause healing, to cause a creative miracle, all right, to happen so that what either the leg will grow out or new toes, depending on the extent of damage, new toes to cut to grow out. Okay, or in the case where somebody had a surgery, and in a, as a result of the surgery, complications arose. All right, now that is physical injury. 
or in the case where you know somebody you know um, um, was 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 injured in his eye. Maybe you know something was thrown into the person's eyes and that damaged that eyeball. Okay, so you know you are going to be addressing what a blind spirit. Then also, also now in such cases, in such cases that a blind spirit is cast out does not necessarily mean that what a new eyeball or the eyes will be healed. Except, listen, except in cases where there was no physical injury whatsoever caused to the eye, but the person began to notice a gradual loss of sight. In cases like that, you cast out the spirit of blindness, the person just automat automatically begins to see. Automatically begins to see. You understand? The person automatically begins to see. All right? But where there is physical injury involved, all right? Where there's physical injury, you need, all right, a combined demonstration of what? Authority and power. And let me quickly say this, which will help us. All right. The most basic way, <coughs> the most basic way of releasing authority and power is your words. Is your words. Is your words. Understand that. Now, <coughs> via your words, you make decrees. You release commands, all right? You release commands. Via your words, you release commands. Okay? You release commands. Also, the release of power too, all right, is primarily executed via words, all right? Power in the spirit responds to words. Do you understand? Power in the spirit responds to words. Power in the spirit responds to words. All right? Another thing, another thing that triggers power, listen carefully, another thing that triggers power is consciousness. Can we all say, everybody say Consciousness. 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 Okay. Consciousness. 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 All right. Now, now I said another major ingredient for stirring power, releasing power is consciousness. Now, consciousness, number one, the number one ingredient that is responsible for consciousness, all right, is accurate truth. Accurate understanding of basic truth, basic truth, basic understanding of, you know, the basic truth of your identity, your righteousness, all right, all right. That is a number one ingredient that um, 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 triggers consciousness, particularly when this truth, this clear, accurate truth, 
is deliberately thought upon, deliberately contemplated upon, deliberately meditated upon. All right? But I went, they, it is deliberately thought upon. Okay? Now, another thing that helps to, you know, trigger consciousness is when you pray, you spend time in the place of prayer within the parameters of truth. Within the parameters of truth. Prayer guided by revelation truth. Revelation understanding helps to trigger consciousness. Not just prayer. See, prayer without knowledge. No, it won't do this. That is the kind of prayer people pray. And they pray for long, pray for long. Eventually, they now break through into a gift. Then I said, oh, it took them six months of praying and fasting before they... Mm -mm. I said, prayer, you know, within the parameters. Prayer engaged in within the parameters of, of accurate truth. All right? Because you see, what eventually triggers the supernatural, besides your new birth, and the indwelling spirit of God in you, besides the, the, way, the indwelling, you know, expression of the life of God, another that helps to trigger the supernatural in you is consciousness. Is consciousness. And like I said, there are ingredients, there are factors that are responsible for consciousness. All right? There are factors that are responsible for consciousness. All right? I said what? The presence of what? Accurate truth. Accurate truth. That was why, say listen, church. That was why, you know, in the book of Acts, the supernatural was demonstrated with ease in the early church. In the early church. All right? It was not only by the apostles. That's why you look at the book of Acts. The people that we are told, who were the first to take the gospel beyond Jerusalem, we are not even told their names. The scripture only says certain saints. It even says certain apostles and prophets. <laughs> it says certain saints. Look at Brother Stephen. He was a Brother Stephen before what? He was considered a deacon. And yet, he had a reputation of working in miracles. He was a, and there were many such. There were many such. Yes, that was why the condition was what? The popular said, it says, set you out. All right? Men of wisdom, full of the Holy Ghost. You see, that we can trust. You see? That means they knew that the people that were working in miracles but they have trust issue. I hope you understand. Otherwise, if the qualification was just people who work in miracles, full of the Holy Ghost, all of them were full of the Holy Ghost. All of them, they were practicing the truth, at least to the extent of what? Of seeing results. But don't forget, they were all still growing. That was why they could still be quarreling amongst them. Remember? That's why they could still be what? Envies amongst them. So Stephen was just a brother. He was not an apostle, and yet he walked in miracles. He was just a brother. <coughs> and yet the group called the Hellenists could not hold him to ransom. It was because they could not, they could not successfully debate Stephen to a standstill that they, they rose up in anger and brought false accusation against him. Because each time they tried to say this, Stephen would bring them to truth. They, and the guy was just a brother. See, a brother, but at what? that had accurate understanding of scriptures, was a brother, not an apostle, not a teacher, not a pastor, not a pastor. Glory to God. So see, that is one of the, so one of, see, the number one factor that helped the church to walk in the supernatural effortlessly is accurate truth. Then, it is that kind of accurate truth they now leveraged upon in the place of prayer. That is, read your Bible. That is where, is it in chapter 12 of Acts? That was where they could pray. Remember when um, Herod, uh, Herod had laid his hand on um, who? James, killed him, and thought it pleased the people and picked Peter. That is where they could pray effortlessly, I mean, eff effectively, all right, until an angel, an angel was released to go and set Peter free from prison. An angel was released. No, why do you think they, they prayed without, the Bible said they prayed without season? It's because they had enough, enough revelation sense to know that as long as their prayer was within what? The, 
parameters of truth, there was no way that there would be no, deli that there would be no deliverance. So they were not praying, hoping that God would do something. No. No. So the effectiveness of their prayer was not in their numbers. All right? It was what? In their understanding. See, James understood. That's why James said what he said in James 5 now. When he said, the prayer, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man. Not the effective fervent prayer of, of righteous people. He says, avail it much. So, the first basis for praying an effective fervent prayer is having an understanding of who you are in Christ. Not just praying and hoping that God will answer, hoping that God one day will answer. No. So consciousness, all right, as informed by what? By truth, accurate truth, all right, and as what? Leveraged upon by what? Prayer. Prayer within such parameter is said to be effective. Prayer is not effective because you are sweating while praying. Prayer is not effective because of the number of hours you are praying. Prayer is said to be effective because of what? Because of the truth, accurate truth, all right, that is propelling it, that is driving that exercise of prayer. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how much you are sweating. No, it doesn't matter how much you are sweating. Sweating is sweet when it is done in the place of a prayer effort informed by truth. And that kind of sweat makes sense. But the kind of sweat, where person they sweat, Sorry, speaking vernacular. <laughs> There's more of our brother who are not who are not listening from Nigeria. Don't mind me, got it carried away. <laughs> the kind of sweat a person, all right, um, you know, passes out from the pores of his skin. Outside of truth, without in the island of truth, all right, <coughs> is a waste. Is a waste. Is a waste. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. <laughs> glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Someone is asking, say, why didn't they believe? When he said Peter was at the door. <laughs> All right. Now, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Now, that, that's another. Yes. As it were. Yes. All right. That is another dimension to the whole, to the whole event. All right. Now, it is not that. Listen carefully. It is not that they didn't believe there was going to be deliverance. All right, it is not that they didn't believe there was going to be deliverance. Listen very carefully. All right, it is not that they didn't believe that there was going to be deliverance. All right, it was more about the 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 time. Listen carefully. It was more about the time it took for it to happen. Please, I want you to understand this. All right. It is more about the time it took for it to happen. You know, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. That happens, you know, at the beginning stage of exercising yourself in righteousness. Now, you are receiving, you are receiving truth of righteousness. You are contemplating on the truth of your identity, all right, of your, your position in Christ. A lot of times, or sometimes, let me say sometimes, you don't know how powerful the truth is, and you don't know how powerful the implication of that truth will be until you see results. Which is one of the reasons why sometimes when in exercising yourself in the truth of righteousness, in the, tr in the truth of your authority in Christ, all right, it's not that you do not believe, but you are amazed at how quickly things turn. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are amazed at how quickly, all right, things happen. Do you understand that? So they were praying, they believed, they were praying. Are you, are you, aren't you surprised that when Rhoda went to tell them and said, Peter's at the door, they said he's his angel. Aren't you surprised that nobody said, eh, angel, let's go and see what an angel looks like. That 
also was a normal dimension for them. Hello? No, they didn't say it's a ghost. They say it is his angel. And nobody stopped praying and said, hey, angel, let me go and see what... You see, seeing angel was a part of the everyday supernatural life of the early church. Say amen, if you understood what I said. Amen. 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 All right. Um, <clears throat> chapter 12, verse 12, he says, And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose son name was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to Hakim, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the door for gladness. You know, got too excited and didn't remember to open the door but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto him, thou art mad. <laughs> not literally, that means you're out of your mind. You understand? Out of your mind, not mad, mad, mad. You know, they don't say, you know, you know they say, when you pray, pray, say, you, you, you are seeing too much, you've prayed too much, you are in the realms of visions. You're not seeing normally. He said, but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, it is his angel. You notice? They didn't say it was a ghost. They didn't say it was a ghost. They said it is his angel. All right. Very... Sorry. Uh, okay, there's a question here. Now, someone is saying, um, considering Peter's healing shadow, how do we get to exercise ourselves to the unconscious release of dynamic power in our environment and activities. Now, very quickly, listen very carefully. All right. Hello. Is everyone here? Please listen carefully. All right. We'll be drawing the session to a close now because of the time. Yes, we'll have another session tomorrow and next tomorrow. All right. But I hope we believe yes, the direction in which the meeting has gone is as the Lord led. Amen. Amen. Sir. Amen. Amen. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Amen, sir. Now, very quickly, listen very carefully. Number one, number one, listen very carefully. There is nothing particularly, there is nothing particularly called unconscious release of power. If you heard me say amen. 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 No. Amen. Amen. Let me explain. Amen. Now listen carefully. I'm going to explain. I said this and I'm said it again so that I can explain. There is nothing. <coughs> there is nothing. Listen carefully. There is nothing particularly called unconscious release of God's power. Because if you listen carefully, from the basic, from the very foundation, you see, from the very foundation, every um, expression of the kingdom is hinged on the believer's deliberate exercise. You see, deliberate exercise. Now, we spoke a bit about consciousness a while ago. All right. You remember that we did a teaching sometimes ago on consciousness, all right? Now, you remember that 
Consciousness is attained by conscious effort. Do you understand? Consciousness okay. is actually a state of the heart. It's a state of awareness. But it's not something that is attained accidentally. It is something that you walk your way into. You walk your way up to. But when on account of attaining a certain level of consciousness of the operation of God, things now begins to happen without, listen, without consciously in your mind releasing it. Don't forget, what is causing that release is a consciousness posture of your heart. The person who asked the question, please, are you listening? Okay, for example, if you look at Jesus and the release of power, if you look at you and the release of power, all right, in relation to the human with the issue of blood, all right, in relation to the human with the issue of blood, yes, even though that power was released without Jesus knowing, but he knew, he felt it as it left, you must understand that every operation of spirituality all right, is driven by consciousness. Is driven by consciousness. Even though, even though when over time, all right, things begin to happen by a divine effortlessness. Never forget what is at the foundation of it is what is consciousness that took deliberate steps and discipline in quote, to attain. And mind you, in the realm of the spirit, consciousness is the state of every spirit being. Whether it's in darkness or it's in the realm of dominion of light, the kingdom of light. Consciousness drives every being. As a matter of fact, listen carefully. Remember when we're talking about breathing. Consciousness is how every being breathes. Every being, you know, I told you in the spirit that they, they, don't, they don't breathe oxygen in and out. I said, we explained that the breathing mechanism is something we're also going to look at within this subject of kingdom architecture. All right. <clears throat> the breathing mechanisms in the spirit, all right, is, is as a result of each being's consciousness of himself. Do you understand that? I'll say it again. The breathing mechanism of every living being is as a result of what? Of the consciousness of every being of himself. Consciousness of himself. That is what you saw in chapter 2, rather, of Genesis. When it says, and God breathed into man, and man became a living soul. Now that breathing into man was the introduction of man into the body. So the moment man, all right, the moment, the moment man contacted the body, his body gained consciousness. So his body's consciousness, all right, is actually in awareness of man. Hello, someone. Yes, sir. Kai, Kai, Kai. I follow you, sir. <laughs> it's important you understand it. Hi. Hi. Remember in chapter Please come five. Again, sir. Okay, I will just listen. Remember in chapter five, in chapter five of John, <coughs> I think twenty six now, chapter five verse twenty six, where Jesus says that. Um, let me read here, John six, John five twenty twenty six, John five twenty six. If you have your Bible there, you can read it, or you can look at it. John five twenty six. The King James says, as the father had life in himself, as the father had life in himself, so hath he given to the son to have life in himself. Now, let's use different translations. Oh, sorry. Let's use different translation of that.
Look at, uh, let me read one translation that I, I just discovered recently, or a very simple translation, but very, very, very powerful. It's called JMNT, JM New Translation, New Testament. It says, you see, just as the Father continuously holds or, co or constantly has life within himself, thus also he gives in the Son or to the Son to be continuously holding or constantly having life within himself. Can somebody help us read the Amplified? Someone with Amplified, can you help us read it? You have the Amplified, unmute your mic, read it. Don't worry. Believe me, when I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, the time is coming. For even as the Father has life in himself and is self-existent, so he has given to the Son to have life in himself and be self-existent. Now, isn't that scary? If you study that scripture carefully, isn't that scary? Scary. I mean, why would God want to have the Son all right, capable, listen, capable of existing independently of God. Now, we have a teacher where we've dealt with that. Why is God not afraid? Why is God not afraid of, 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 of allowing the son to be capable of existing independently of himself? Now, first and foremost, number one reason is this. All right, all right, first in context, number one reason is this. It is as a result of the nature of the life. The life of God is independent, all right, of anything. All right? Hello. The life of God is independent of anything. You see, the life of God is self-sustaining. Do you understand it is self-sustaining. All right. So the character and nature of living and self-existence, Jesus is talking about here, is actually in relation to the life of God. It's actually in relation to the life of God. You understand? So you see, but you must also understand, you must also understand this. Listen very carefully. You must understand this. Hmm. This may shock you, but I want you to listen carefully. While, <clears throat> while other beings, you know, in the creation of God. While other beings have a type of life, all right, that exists interdependently of God. There is interdependence, all right? While other beings have a type of life that, is in, that exists interdependently of God, all right? The new creation has a type of life that is capable of existing independently of God. Now listen carefully. Don't run off with this revelation so that I don't create commotion. Now people now say, you see? Do you see what they are saying now? That you cannot live without God. <laughs> That's what people do. People who are not in a hurry to hear, they will criticize. So, but you listen. Just please pay attention. Pay attention. Now, that is the capability, all right, of the nature of the divine life, which what Jesus came into, all right, that made scripture to refer to him in 1 Corinthians 15 as a life-giving spirit. As a life-giving spirit. Now, when you look at the phrase life-giving spirit, it's an old it was his translation. What does it mean to be a life-giving spirit? Listen. Now, some people read it and think it means 
uh, I can give life. I give life. I give. No, no. It's not that's not what it means first. You are reading English dictionary into it. Now, <clears throat> so people think of life giving. I'm going to say, no, I give life everywhere I go. Yes. Yes, you give life. Yes. Uh, but when he says life giving spirit, is it when you, when you lay hands on animals, is it the life of God you gave to them? Does that not mean that after laying hands on an animal that is sick? I'm sure you know you can do that. Does that mean that it is, it is God's life you have given to them? So the animal is not, is not in possession of the life of God. Or when you lay hands on the sick, that a sick person that is not sick, that is healed, after he gets it, does that mean that it's automatically what, a possession of the life of God? No. Now, when the Bible says that Jesus was made a life giving, that's in 1 Corinthians 12, 15. Sorry, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12. Sorry, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. All right. Now, so when he says that Jesus was made a life giving spirit, what first, what does a life giving spirit mean? It is not a spirit that gives life. Life giving means a spirit that has a type of life that is self reproductive, it is self generating, it is self sustaining. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying? Hello? Yes, sir. 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 We, are following, we are following, sir. We are following, sir. Yes, sir. We are loyal, so, sir. When you say, when you say that you are a life-giving spirit, it doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily mean you are a distributor of life. You see, Thank you. Someone is saying self-preserving. All right? A life that has the ability to preserve. But you see, beyond just preserving, because this life does not even need preservation. Beyond just preserving, it means it's a life that is capable of existing. It's capable of existing on its own <coughs> without needing support. Oh, Jesus. That is the nature of the life of God. And that is what he gave to you. And God was not afraid to give it to you. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes, this life sustains itself. Do you understand? <clears throat> now, look at angels, cherubs, seraphs. <clears throat> The morning stars, all beings, they cannot live. They cannot live outside of God. Because you see, the power that powers the software of the kind of life they have is the light and the glory of God. That was why, that was why David said, remember in Psalms, David said, in speaking of the relation that in speaking of the relationship that creation have with God, all right. David said, "You withhold your hand, they die. You release your hand, and they live. That is creation. But the life, the life of God. Do you understand?" The life of God is the glory of God. The glory of God who's shining, all right, powers the life of all of creation. So this life of God, all right, is, 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 it has no need for support. Its support system is itself. Hello? Its support system is itself. So, relax. So, when the Bible says that, when you begin to declare that you have the order of the life giving, or I'm, or I'm a life giving spirit, it's, don't think first that it means I'm giving life. No, 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 not that first. It is not about giving life first. It's not about giving life first. See, that is the reason why being a possessor of that life, all right, 
having a proper understanding of that life, all right, causes you to live a life that makes it impossible for infection to survive in your system. Are you paying attention? Not first and foremost because that life will kill it. It's first and foremost because that life cannot be affected by anything. That life will go to hell and sleep there. You understand that? It will sleep there. It will sleep there undisturbed. No, no, no. It will not go to war with all of the forces of hell to prove its superiority. Rather, it will sleep through hell. Are you paying attention? Yes, sir. So yes, when sir. you say you are of the order of the life-giving spirit, it does mean that nothing... Oh... <coughs> I hope you know. Let me give you, let me give you a picture, all right? I don't want to go into this subject, you know, so that, you know, stretch us. Let me give you a picture. <coughs> Listen, I hope you know that God is everywhere. Hello? Hello, sir. Hello? Are you, I hope you know that God is everywhere. I know. He's in hellfire. I hope you know God is there. Yes. Hello? I know that, yes, I hope sir. you know that yes, God, sir. God is in, uh, God is everywhere. I mean, he's everywhere. Is in where they are committing sin right now. Yes, no, he's there. <laughs> it's just that it's just that he's not manifest there. Are you paying attention? So when you see somebody like David say, Where, where can we hide from you? You know, it doesn't just say about David. Where, where, where are we going to go that you will not see us? Is it is it under the rock, under the sea? He said, let me develop wings and fly. There is no, he is every, see, I hope you know that. Right at the center of the, of the nucleus, the nucleus of a plant, I hope you know that God is there. Glory. <laughs> They tell you <laughs> that atom is indivisible. No, that's not true. Right at the center of that indivisible atom, atomic structure, God is there. He is there. He is there. But guess what? He is there undisturbed. That is why God, God is in where they are committing sin now. And the sin is not affecting him. Hello? God is not being tainted and dented by sin. Okay? He's not being dented by it. <clears throat> In the house of witches, he is there. Do you understand? <laughs> And he's there on account of the architecture of his life. See, listen. <clears throat> when God began the work of creation, all right, God brought forth creation in a way that makes it impossible for him not to be at the center of creation. Even when a part of creation collapsed into darkness, do you understand that? it still remained impossible for God not to be at the center. That is an example of what the Bible was trying to say when in chapter 1 of Colossians, he's speaking about Jesus. He says, by him, all things. He didn't say by him, all righteous things. By him, all things subsist. All things. All things. Oh, glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Oh, there's a way I'm feeling. You know when you begin to touch some things and you start, they are not just start staring in you. Glory to God. <laughs> Oops. 
Glory. 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 Glory to Jesus. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. You see, <clears throat> the nature, the character, the expression and the architecture of the God life we have received. See, we have not touched the fullness of it yet. I'm telling you, that is when you go through those basic, you know, new creation reality teachings, and your head begins to swell. You think, oh boy, you 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 know. no no. No, that's like the more you continue to submit your heart to the engrafted word, fresh layers of, of revelation of that truth you thought you know, didn't know that you knew it at a level, we continue to smash on you. Continue to smash on you. Oh, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Oh, glory, glory, glory. I love this. Amen. So you see, that life inside of us, that life, that life inside of us. Oh, glory. There is a life inside of us. <laughs> there is a life inside of us. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Glory Hallelujah. To Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Glory. Glory. Amen. Glory. You know, brethren, we'll be bringing the meeting to a close. I don't feel we can go any further. You know, I feel like, I feel like, frankly, I feel like going in different directions. You know, glory to God. Let me leave you on this note. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You see, these are the kind of things you hear and it provokes, see, it provokes meditation. It will provoke, it will provoke, provoke loud tonguing. See, how can you hear this and not pray in the Holy Ghost? How can you God. and say prayer is, is difficult? How can you hear this? All right? And not have sleepless nights in meditation. Trying to, trying to unravel this thing, trying to touch the ends of it. Have you noticed? The more you want to touch the end, the deeper it becomes. And the deeper yes. it becomes, mm. the, the more you are being pulled in, the more you are being sucked in. I call it divine beckons. Mm. Divine beckons that mm. sucks you in. Sucks you in. Sucks you in until you lose natural senses. Until divine <laughs> wisdom seizes you. Glory to Jesus. Glory. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, Glory. Glory. Glory to Jesus. God. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Glory to Jesus forever. Hallelujah. Forever. Hallelujah. Forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can you give a shout to Jesus wherever you are? Glory. Give a shout. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm reminded of that scripture in first John when Apostle John said 
He said, it does not yet appear what we shall be. Oh, hey. Do you understand? You see, hey. what we shall be is done upon our hearts. All right? Yes, sir. According to layers, increasing layers of revelation. What we shall be. Hallelujah. Even though he says, but when he shall appear, we shall what? We shall be like him. Shall but be said, like he does not get like appear. Go, go back. See, we are, we are breaking into the tangible reality <laughs> by the illumination of light and revelation. Glory, <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. You set your heart upon Amen. this. Then you understand the impossibility, the impossibility of any virus to survive in your body. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Ah, forever. Jesus be praised forever. Glory. You see, Amen. When, we say, Amen. when we say glory to God forever, we are declaring, we are declaring that our unraveling of what we have become participators of. Yes. All right. Is an ongoing everlasting journey. So when we say glory to God forever, when we are saying God is forever, we are declaring that we are also forever. Do you understand? We are declaring that the explosion of the life inside of us is also forever. Amen. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory to God forever. I am forever. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Father. you, Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Thank glory, you, Father. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to 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 Jesus. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus, we praise forever, 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 forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so we will be, we will be, you know, how do we say this now? We can't close the meeting. Amen. <laughs> we'll just close the session. All right. We'll close the session. All right. And um, We'll be coming together again. We'll be coming together again tomorrow. All right, we'll be coming together again tomorrow. Now, I'm thinking that um, for the sake of the questions, because there are, there are many other questions we couldn't answer because of the time, and you know, for the sake of the questions, as a matter of fact, it was question and answer that led us in this direction, of course, by the divine plan of God. You know, so we are thinking that 
some of these other questions still needs to be talked about, all right? All right, hard still needs to be, you know, established, you know? So for the sake of the question, I'm thinking that we can start the meeting earlier tomorrow, all right? We can start earlier, all right? If you check on the, 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 the e-bill, the e-flyer, you would see that um, the time on it is six, right? Oh, oh, four. Oh, really, really. Imagine, I didn't know it was four. I wanted to actually say that I wanted us to start early. I wanted to start by four. I was thinking that it was six today, six tomorrow, then 12 on Sunday. So it's good. So it's all well. So see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow by 4 p.m. Nigerian time, all right? See you tomorrow by 4 p.m. Nigerian time. Love you, Pastor. Love you too. Love you, you too. Thank you. Love so you too. Thank you, sir. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor. Love you. Love you. Yeah, love you too. Love you too. Uh, love you too. Thank you, sir. Much love, sir. Love you, sir. Love you. Subscribe. God bless. You. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you, sir. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Ay, 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 yay. <laughs> hey, what a meeting, my God. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. You are known, sir. My God. Ah. Hey. I can't sleep this night. Chai. My God. Hey, hey. Beginning of wisdom.